This program was recorded on Monday, December the 15th, in the year of our Lord, 2014. The opinions expressed by the participants in the following program do not necessarily represent that of this station or its management. Or anybody else. <laughs> okay. From the John DeVita Recording Studio, located in an undisclosed and clandestine location on the great northwest side of our fair city of Chicago, we once again are pleased to be presenting yet another edition of our monthly roundtable panel discussion show, Meet the Chicago Historians. Today we have submitted for your approval our last program of the year. Being the month of December, this is our special Christmas holiday show. Now here's the guy who started it all, John DeVita. Thank you, Rich, from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, December the 15th, the year of 2014. Today the panel will be talking about Christmas in Chicago including discussions from the Christmas tree ship with guest panelist Bob Trisek. And now, to start today's broadcast, here is our announcer, Rich Lang. And now here's our panel moderator, Jack Red Ryan. We have to pause a moment. I think the people are still cheering because we told them it was the last show for the year. So. <laughs> he's now easy. John, our, 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 our uh, show clock hasn't started over here, the timer. <laughs> well, now it has. Okay, we can still go by this, right? Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello everybody. Hello. hello. We've been having a party here. Spirits have been flying, and, you know, it's early in the day, but, you know, I don't know what time it is in Greenland or somewhere, right? But nobody can get you under the mistletoe, Jack. Hmm. Nobody wants them under the mistletoe. <laughs> oh, that's right, too. That's right. <laughs> I feel hurt now. <laughs> I'm going to be like play Jack Parr and walk off. <laughs> Jack Parr, by the way, look him up, you young folks, who that was. <laughs> uh, maybe you, your parents probably remember now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, this is our get-together, and we usually talk about Christmas in Chicago and different traditions we have. And we also, of course, we're going to start off with some what we like to call current events or new, new history, right? History is News said, Roundup. Yeah, and uh, they say on the History Channel, made fresh every day. Today's uh, whatever is, is, is tomorrow's just, history. It's just like fresh aged cheese. <laughs> Think about that one. Swing that one. go over. Yeah, yeah. Swing that one by us again. That brought the discussion to a I have no idea. Oh, wait. <laughs> it, oh, wait. It, Drum roll. It's an ad on the, on the window. It says fresh aged cheese. Oh. That is cute. Aged now, how fresh? can you have fresh aged cheese? I, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a tall, short. Okay, guy. that calls for our, our, our special musketeer roll call. Should we go left or right this time? Who wants to go Mickey left? Mouse. Oh, yeah. I okay. never go to the left. I'm oh. not uh, on the left. Yeah. Well, no, no. Oh, far oh, 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 oh. from that, Jack. Far. Well, you, you know, I, well, me either. But uh, on the Mickey left side of the table, right? Oh, okay, oh, okay. And, uh, and you are. <laughs> I'm Bill Kugelman. Uh, retired from the Chicago Fire Department after 46 uh, uh, very short years, and uh, right now uh, uh, not doing anything. Mm. Not a blessed thing. You Nothing. Never, you never do anything anyway. No, that's right. <laughs> no, that's right. People say, uh, "Well, uh, you know, what are you doing? Are you doing anything?" Well, you know, let's uh, let's get together and do something. No thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a Frank Fontaine routine. Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. 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 Mr. Don. Behave yourself. Yeah. Well, what fun is that? Is yeah. my answer to you know. Yeah. I got no choice. <laughs> and to my left, I'm Richard Lang, your announcer, longtime history buff. Did some history teaching, and a student, my mentor, Ken Little, who you'll hear from in a couple of moments. 
Okay. Next up, John. I am Charles Dickens, author of A Christmas Carol. Very, Gosh. very well read at this time of year. Good to be with all of you here in the colonies. My name is John S. Kachoko, and I was in politics and government for many years and then had the good fortune to become associated with WJJG and John DeVitt, and I'm glad to be here on Meet the Historians. We'll talk more about that a little later. Yeah. I'm talking about okay. it right now. No, I mean, a little later, we'll get into <laughs> the more. Sure. <laughs> yes, sir. And I'm Ken Little. I was in the uh, fire alarm office for 35 years. I taught at Wright College. I have two of my students here. And also, speaking of A Christmas Carol, I saw the play last night. Ah, yesterday. very good. What happened in the end? In the Goodman Theater. Uh, <laughs> it had a bad ending. Uh, a lot I, of car chases and gunfights? Uh, no. Uh, Scrooge was a, he, he was sort of a, a mentor for me, you know. I, I, I adored him. I really, you know, and he... He turned. Well, Reminds you of people you met, isn't it? Uh, well. <laughs> Out upon Merry Christmas. Bah! Humbug! Yeah, bah humbug. Bah yeah, he, humbug. He turned, he turned bad at the very yeah. end. So, uh, and to my left is. Al Opitz. I worked for the city of Chicago for 20 years, or stayed in the house <laughs> anyway for 20 years. I, I, I uh, worked for the water department. And we even got water going once in a while. Now, wait a minute now. What was your position? What was your function there? I was called a filtration engineer. That means I was responsible for the water being drinkable, potable. As was there call. quality control or something? Oh, yeah. So you had to pass water? You no, know, I didn't have to pass water. I just walked past it. <laughs> I couldn't resist that one, Al. I realize that. Uh, well, you, we, um, we didn't pass water, but we walk, walked past water. Never. <laughs> the, the, these guys, that was, folks, that was Jack all, Ryan. They're, they're, I'm, I'm representing your friend. That was Jack Ryan who okay, made, yeah, made I, that I was comment. Saying, I was going <laughs> to say, these guys are all too modest. Their experience yeah. and uh, practical experience and educational experience yeah. is just uh, incredible. And uh, I'm well, serious. Well, then let's hear from you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you see, I have. Yeah. I was going to say, you have to say for yourself. I today. have a lot to be modest about, so. Yeah, yeah we know that. Thank <laughs> you, Winston Churchill. Uh, yeah, how did right. you get to be moderator of this program, Jim? Yeah. Uh, default. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else wanted it. <laughs> you, had, you had many defaults, and then. <laughs> no, <laughs> I lost the bet. How, <laughs> how much did that cost you? Do I know? The, 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 I'm sure you had a pay. You I'll know. clout, you know. Sure, yeah, yeah. clout. Favoritism. Yeah. Oh, just, just Don't like they call it, um, what's the word? Nobody else wanted a job. Politics. <laughs> no, what's the one that like re relates to the like papacy or something? Uh, I forgot anyway. Uh, I'll we'll think about that one later. No. Yeah. Uh oh. Or Caesar or papism or mm -hmm. patronage or I don't know. You're is. gonna think. Anyway, uh, yeah. But seriously though, these guys are really uh, bringing an awful lot of ex life experience and uh, and wisdom to the to the uh, uh, table. Yeah, we got wisdom. wisdom. Now we're in trouble. And if they just brought some some. Uh, a uh, little champagne or something or some yeah, crumpets. Champ yeah. Champagne. We're having our party anyway. We're going to break later on and exchange gifts. So yeah. we're going to have that put on. We'll try to get that on the cable, the cable hookup. But uh, yeah. anyway, <clears throat> cable. we have a couple people absent. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. You didn't finish. Wow. What? This me? is Jack Ryan. Oh, oh, this is Jack Ryan. John T. Ryan. Sure. Uh, some people call me Red. Uh, daughters call me Daddy. And some ladies call me Big Daddy. Mm. And, it it uh, wasn't the FBI calling you Red, I hope, uh, or, or the House uh, Un-American FBI activity. number, indictment <laughs> <laughs> number. Or Senator, I mean, it was, yeah. it was, oh, oh. Well, I have an FBI number, don't you? Yeah. yeah. When you fingerprint it, you yes. got an FBI number. Exactly. Yeah. What does the, the T system, stand for? So to speak. What, yeah, well. what does the T stand for? C. C. T, you said John oh, T. Oh, yeah, T for trouble, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I had to ask. Tomas. John Thomas, 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 Thomas. Saint Thomas. Yeah. A doubting Saint Thomas. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, yes. Would be related to peeping Thomas. Would you? <laughs> well, <laughs> or doubting, no. doubting Thomas. Thomas. I said a doubting Thomas. I think. Yeah. That one comes from uh, Thomas the Apostle, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, doubting him. Yeah. Did you know he went to India? Oh. oh. What did no, you he was there? Did you bump into him there? No, he made it to India. Yeah. Tarzan went to India too. That was Jacques Mahoney, but that's a movie. <laughs> he was there. They they believed that that was the Thomas story. who was there. So, well, good. Anyway, uh, well, as we said, this is our show. We would like to get into uh, some, turn, turn serious for a moment. Uh, it's indeed strange that about two months back, we lost Jane Byrne, uh, the first and only lady mayor of Chicago. And we just recently lost Judy Bartopinka, 
or probably one of the highest offices a woman ever did in the uh, state. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, John Koshelko was very close. Uh, so was John DeVita. I can say a few words, too. From the radio scene, but John, uh, John Shushelko, can you give us some reflection? Of, uh, well, I I first met Judy uh, in the 1970s. I probably have known Judy for for nearly 40 years. I, I was starting in in politics in in Cicero when she was a reporter for the Life newspapers, mm -hmm. which was a locally owned uh, publication at that time by the Cubic family and and their their colleagues, and uh, she had already been with the Life uh, for for a while. She wrote a column. In addition to covering news events, she had a, a, a weekly column that was sort of like a, a, a cups column. It was a, a, a column about people in Cicero and Berwyn and civic leaders, political people, uh, people prominent in, in the two communities. And I got to know Judy through that. She didn't cover Cicero as a, as a, a general course. That wasn't one of her assignments, but she was very visible at, at public events and uh, already active in the community and then in in 1980 we we, we were the uh, the two republican candidates uh in the w w the old multi-member district you may remember when there were three state legislators from each district in illinois prior to that that was the last election in which that format uh existed judy and i were the two republican nominees for the old seventh house district in illinois and we were both elected so we went to springfield Congratulations. In, in 1981. What year was that? It was the 1980 election, when hey. with the same the November election when Ronald Reagan was elected president. I had the privilege of being on the ballot at the same time as, as President Reagan. And we went to Springfield, and that was the last time, of course, they had the multi-member districts, as the voters had approved a referendum to go to single-member districts. Mm -hmm. And in the remap, uh, my home community, Cicero, was, was divided up into five districts. It was impossible <laughs> for me to... It was just a horrible example wow. of gerrymandering. Five. Cicero, a community at that time about 70,000 people, was split into four Senate districts and five House districts. How did that happen? The city, well, Cicero in those days was heavily Republican, and what the city was doing was it was, it was dividing up Republican communities on its periphery so that it could reach out and grab a little slice of Cicero for each of its districts. Oh, the district didn't yeah. just be Cicero then? It was yeah, it included mostly Chicago. So, uh, so each of these, all but one of those districts wound up being represented by a, a Chicago-backed Democrat. Uh, so that Cicero, Cicero, the result was Cicero could no longer send anyone to the legislature. Its, its voting power was completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the only district that continued to send a Republican was the one that Judy inherited. She got a little slice of Cicero and then Berwyn and Riverside in her home territory. So she was able to go back to Springfield after that election where I did, it had ended my legislative career. Go ahead. But Judy went on to uh, then serve in the state Senate and then became the state treasurer for a number of years. She was, she was the state treasurer. And uh, you may recall that she then made sort of what, what might have been the final step in the career of running for governor. She was the Republican nominee for governor against Rod Blagojevich uh, when Blagojevich was running for his second term. She was the, uh, the candidate opposing him for his second term. And she spoke out very, uh, very forcefully that there were things going on, that there were investigations happening, and uh, uh, there was very little interest in the issue she was raising about about the administration. And she was defeated heavily. She she lost very badly in that election. It was a heavily Democratic year that that she ran. And of course, it wasn't long after that that uh, Governor Blagojevich uh, wound up wor yeah. with with no. great difficulties with the law. So anyway, Judy came back. She had to give up her her seat as treasurer in order to run for governor because all those seats are, of course, on the same election. So she couldn't run for some states allow you to run for both, but Illinois does not. And uh, so she had to give up the one seat. And I don't know if any seat would allow you to run for two statewide offices simultaneously. But anyway, she came back at the subsequent election running for the office of comptroller and was elected and had, had just been re-elected comptroller a few weeks ago. And I understand uh, she was even interviewed by the local Riverside paper uh, and said something that affected like, well, is this going to be your last hurrah? And she said, oh, no, this isn't going to be my last term. I'm not announcing that this is my last term. So she apparently had, you know, future plans. Uh, very, and uh, I was shocked. I was completely dumbfounded on, I guess it was Tuesday or Wednesday morning when I, I was walking away from the TV because 
usually usually that little five minutes of local news they give you after the uh, you know the network the New York news is usually about some fire in some warehouse or some shooting somewhere and I had walked away and I hear the the reporter announce that you know that it was announced this morning that state controller Judy Bartopinka has died at the age of 70. Uh, I had expected to see Judy the previous Sunday. Uh, she was uh, scheduled to be at a civic event, uh, Seguin, which is a, a, uh, an agency in the western suburbs that sows, serves those with, with special needs and disabilities. They have an annual Christmas party that is sponsored by uh, Al Carr, who was uh, Cook County Commissioner for many years and was our, our town clerk. And uh, Judy has attended that many times in the past. Cause it's a very, it's a, very, it's an organization very prominent in Cicero, Berwyn, Riverside, North Riverside. And I've often seen her at this event. It always takes place on the first Saturday in, uh, in December. She was scheduled to be there, and she didn't attend. So I mean, I'm just wondering if, if maybe already, you know, her health. Yeah, I, I don't she know, had, but she had a stroke already, and they took her to the hospital. Well, that was on, but that was like <laughs> Tuesday, I think. That yeah, that but happened. I think she was. Yeah. Uh, stroke doesn't. It's, it, it works up on you, and uh, I think she was poor, poorly, but, but she also has uh, osteo, osteoporosis because her she back has, was... She had a rough time. She had a rough time in health-wise. She, she had been uh, arthritis and, and that sort yeah. of thing that mm. had her back and her... She often, she often had to use a cane. Uh, sure. Rheumatoid time, time arthritis, was it? Pardon? Oh, yeah. She, she but she a, never made a big yeah, thing. No, that, no. Never. But, she, but, but uh, yeah, let me... It, that never slowed her down no. or impeded no. her. She was always extremely active and, yeah. and, and well, involved. Well, once you met her, you won't forget her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she... I always say she, she's a... A person that most politicians should follow. She was uh, full of energy. She was full of energy. It's full whatever energy. she was full of energy. She's fisc she was fiscally conservative and socially mod uh, uh, I would say moderate, but she was uh, somewhat liberal on the social issues. And she went against the Republican Party because she was pro uh, gay rights. She was pro uh, birth control and yeah. all this. So she was very outspoken, and she, I guess she had a tendency to tell people the way she thought. <laughs> I, I never knew Judy, and I was, because I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life, I never knew Judy to be one of those who was um, uh, hostile or, or very uh, belligerent on, on, the, on the issue of abortion. I mean, I know she was pro-choice. She was against partial birth abortion. I yeah, know she always way. made it clear on that. I think she always went out of her way to try to be respectful uh, of those who, who who had the pro-life position, I never knew her to be one of those people who was in your face about about the issue of abortion and was sort of trumpeting it as a as a. And I, and I always respect because I, obviously we were good friends in spite of the fact that that was an issue that that we didn't see eye to eye upon. But it was never a problem. It was not not, not the kind of thing that she would yeah. raise or try to to use in an antagonistic way with other people. Well, there, there's there's so many ways around to control uh, birth without going through the abortion procedure. and I It's think called it, prevention, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, the Catholic Church at one time was very anti-contraceptive. Well, they still are, aren't they, as far as uh, they are? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, I they guess. are. Yes, they, they are. They are no. They're getting a little more moderate what, there with the new, new cardinal. One thing I want to say about Judy is... Or the new, new uh, pope. A little, a little more so, because... I think he but, understands that. But the teachings that, of the Catholic Church are yeah, well, just what we say. Well, you know, come on just now. Just because there's a pope there. What does the Lutheran pope say about that? Yeah. Lutheran pope don't get in there. <laughs> no, he's, 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 he's uh, not going to go and get involved with the uh, issue of gay rights or anything else. I haven't heard anything at all. One thing I want to say is Judy, everybody, there's been a lot of emphasis on Judy's views on gay rights and abortion. Judy was as rock hard conservative as they came when it came to budget, taxation, fiscal matters, and also an issue that didn't relate to her in, in state office, but she was very deeply conservative on national defense, foreign policy. She was extremely patriotic. She attended anything that had to do with veterans. She always was, was out there in terms of support for the armed forces. And, uh, you know, uh, Judy was, was, was staunchly conservative on those issues. Yeah, she also want to combine the uh, treasurer's office with the controller's right. office. Right. And I have yet to figure out what the difference between the two are. 
Essentially, you know, uh, the, the, the controller <laughs> approves the bills and the treasurer pays them. It's, it was this yeah. idea that there should be a <clears throat> check and balance. But it, you know, there's a lot of question now whether we need two offices doing right. pretty much the same job. You yeah. write too many checks, it'll mess up your balance. There you go. But, you know, well, the yeah. reality, you want to know the reality is why do we have those offices? They're stepping stones. Yeah. They're stepping stones for public officials so that there is an intermediate office between the legislature and the governor or a Senate seat. Yeah, it, would be, it, it would be a great honor to her if they just did away with the office. There, there's Especially been after what's going on now that sure. never had before. Yeah. But well, that would take you gotta, you gotta, not after. First It would save the state of Illinois twelve million dollars. Yeah. Well, that's that's like for but those you know people, what? it's like taking back bottles to the store. Knowing the pockets. state of Illinois, if they abolished the office within a short time, the surviving office which just would just double its number of assistants and yeah. deputies. That's the and problem. Yeah. They would I mean I mean I understand the motive would be to save money, mm -hmm. but that's not the way Illinois works. Saving mm -hmm. money is not yeah. Illinois' oh, no, long suit. Yeah. They also, would find a way to just yeah. expand the new office until it would be costing just as much as the two offices. Well, did it was the same thing was true with the tripartite uh, Office yeah, that didn't save any money. They sold uh, that as a money-saving proposition. Yeah, well, it ended up costing money. more money sure. because they, the jokers that took over the office They just expanded more, more their money. staff yeah. and their expenses. Yeah. yeah, They didn't need it, but they did it. Yeah. My 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 uh, experience with Judy, I was this very... John, uh, John, this is our boss, John okay, DeVita, okay. talking now. Okay, this is John, everybody. okay. My, my experience with Judy was we were very, very good friends. When I was station manager at uh, WJJG, she came every Thursday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to do a show called The Judy Show. Mm -hmm. And her uh, theme song was uh, Stars and Stripes. And uh, she was very, very, very nice lady. <clears throat> uh, every time she come up, we would talk. I always got a kiss on the right s side of my face, and I haven't washed my face. <clears throat> I haven't washed my face since. We know, and then, we know. We, we want to talk to you about that. And then um, <laughs> when Judy couldn't couldn't be at the, at the station to do her show, she would have John come in and sit in for her. Mm -hmm. And several times I sat in... Would he give you a kiss, too? <laughs> no. <laughs> several times I listened to, to John and uh, his knowledge of, um, of, of the subject that he was talking about, and he was... Very good, and I invited them to uh, to partake in uh, our program, which we are doing right now, Meet the Chicago Historians. And John's been a very dear friend for all the years I, I have known him. Goes back away. So from the only nice thing I, I got you, to John. say is, Judy, you did a great job. Rest yeah. in peace and be happy. Okay. Thank you, John. Now, uh, John Koshelko, going sure. back to you now. Sure. What was her? What is her? Uh, Judy Barr to pink. It was Barr a maiden name. Or? Barr was her maiden name. Her so what's her? What's her um, pedigree? <laughs> well, her family was her family was Czech. Uh, uh -huh. Her mother was a lady by the name of Lillian Barr, married to Bill Barr. I don't know what her mother's maiden name was, but her, her, William Barr was her father, and they operated a real a real estate agency uh, along Cermak Road. And uh, Bill Barr had been a World War II veteran, and I know that as with in my case, the fact that my dad served in World War II is the origin Mine of too. my interest in the military. And it was the same with Judy. I think Judy's. Judy's devotion to veterans and, and to, to the armed forces probably began with her father. Uh, they were very prominent in the community. Lillian Barr was, was uh, very uh, visible uh, at a time when there weren't that many women uh, who were, you know, that active in business and civic affairs. So her family was Czech. She always talked about her Czech ancestry. Yeah. And, and Berwin, Berwin at that time was, was overwhelmingly made up of people of Czech ancestry. There were a substantial number of Czechs in Cicero, although Cicero had at other groups as well. So uh, she had that ethnic tie-in, and she was very proud of that. We talked about the accordion. I mean, she was very active. She was one of the people at the very beginning when the Hobie Festival was being uh, created in uh, Cicero and Berwyn. She always promoted that in the newspaper. And in okay, what column. is that now to explain? It's the, it's the annual parade. Uh, yeah, I'm not taking for granted everyone knows about that. It's the annual uh, parade and many other uh, civic events that take place in Cicero and Berwyn the first weekend in October. And it celebrates the hobi, which is the Czech word for the mushroom. Mm -hmm. And some people call it the mushroom parade. Apparently that's the time of year. Apparently that's the time of year when mushrooms are in bloom or whatever mushrooms do in the forests. It sounds Wait a minute. Like, sounds like the old that's the signal of our emergency yes. warning system. Oh, it's just a test. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Amber alert. Uh, 
Oh. But it's in Marion City, Illinois. So, yeah. so Judy was, uh, you know, Judy had was was very proud of her ethnic roots, very proud of her parents, and uh, so her 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 maiden name was was Judy Barr. She was married to a gentleman named Topinka. She has one son, also named Joseph Topinka, whom she always called Peppy. Hmm. Always called Peppy, which I guess may, maybe the Czech version of Joseph. I, I think I've heard that yeah. that is the Czech version of Joseph. Well, Isn't he, there uh, a bar funeral home also? Ken, do you know? I wonder if that, that's any uh, relation. I think that's I, a different Rogers spelling. Yeah. Her, her oh, name was spelled B A R. I think. Yeah, so is this. Well, you got I've, I've also said B A R R. Yeah, I think ours is B A. It's up around, used to be 6200 on Broadway or something. Around there. Yeah. I thought they were Irish, though, truthfully. Uh, I, I thought know. they were B A R R. But it's B A R R. Yeah. But yeah. well, the other thing, too, is Bill Pilsen is also a Czech word for mushroom. Or Polish or German. Pilsen? Yeah, it's Pils. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's <coughs> where it came from. It's, uh, it's actually Pils, which is German. Pils is a city, isn't it? Uh, right? there's, yes. there's a very big intermix between the Czechs and the Germans. Sure. Yeah. So they're, they're, I they're, they Google, have a lot I've of. i got to Google that up and see. Yeah. B- Pilsner yeah. beer, too, right? P I L Z. Well, Bohemia Pils. was part of the old. German Empire, the yeah. old Holy yeah. Roman Empire at one time. Kingdom of Bohemia, right? Right, the yeah. Kingdom yeah. of Bohemia. And yeah. you know, that that's a good uh, tie-in to uh, history because you say, well, what's what's Bohemia, etc.? Well, it, it existed, you know, 125 years ago. It doesn't exist now. I mean, it does, but it's part of yeah. a bigger... Czech Republic? Yeah. yeah. And well, there they, was no Czechoslovakia until after... Uh, yeah, Czechoslovakia was a, was a, was a made-up right. country right. combining Bohemia and Moravia, which make up the Czech lands. Bo- yeah. When you say Czech, it means Bohemia and Moravia. Yeah. And then you combine that with Slovakia, another yeah. separate, and you get oh. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that, of course... Did not survive long after the fall of communism. They they separated well, yeah, into two, they, two countries. We were, I was there shortly after they separated. They called the Velvet Separation. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a, a funny yeah. story at that time because of the tripartite, each was uh, allowed a third of the armament hmm. that was there, but the new uh, Czech Republic didn't like the equipment too much, so they gave half. Slovakia, <laughs> because <laughs> it was uh, basically junk. And the problem was that Slovakia, at that time, h- had a lot of factories that built this stuff. And the problem was after the, the fall of the empire, the factories fell also. So there was very little work, and they had a lot of a lot of problems to start up with. One. Of- one well, of the, the titles uh, of the old the old Austrian emperor, like Franz Josef, one of his titles was King of Bohemia. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the but, titles. Of but the um, what if those checks bounced? Oh, <laughs> that was Jack yeah. Ryan. Go ahead, uh, <laughs> Mister. Are you going to say something? Just a little point on Chicago history. Is there any identifiable Moravian community in Chicago? I haven't uh, heard anything. Uh, most of them they go under the Czech name. Bohemian uh, name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a there's a particular church called there there is a Moravian uh, uh, religious entity. I've seen that I've seen that term Moravian in connection with a a particular church. But I'm, I'm not sure. Right yeah. yeah. well, Moravian. I'm That's sure the, the only yeah. time I can yeah. think of yeah. seeing the term Moravia separately yeah. like that. Well, yeah. I talk. I know I'm a couple. Not of, sure if it's a Lutheran uh, church or uh, Moravian. I, I'm not uh, sure. Uh, yeah. It usually be Catholic down yeah, there. Not, no, it might be. Catholic, it might be. Uh, but the other thing is, they also deny there was a Bohemia at one time, even though it's Bohemia it really hasn't been on a map for about about a hundred years now, or whatever. Uh, they they claim there was never a Bohemia, but if you go through Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> a scandal in scandal Bohemia, Bohemia. Yeah. one of his <laughs> most famous <laughs> stories, yeah. the King of Bohemia. All yeah. you have to do is go down Pulaski uh, Road, and you'll find uh, there's no, cemetery. Wenceslas. Yeah, National Bohemian Cemetery. Yeah. Do no, Bohemian National. We'll yeah. be celebrating uh, at Christmas time the the hymn "Good King Wenceslas." Yeah, yeah is about actually he wasn't a king. He was actually the duke. Uh, Bohemia was not yet a kingdom. He was the duke of Bohemia, when, but he was a real historical figure. Duke yeah. Wenceslas. Mm-hmm. The big uh, in Prague, Wenceslas Square is the main. Uh, uh, square yeah. in the center yeah. of the capital city. Yeah, the huge was, statue of Wenceslas. I was there. Uh, Saint. Was, uh, very, very picturesque 
area to go into. For some reason or other, the old uh, uh, Hasburg Empire had very nice, I, uh, depending on your taste, though, uh, the architecture was great. Ornate. You know, it was beautiful, yeah. uh, stuff like broke. that. And you had uh, Warsaw, uh, Budapest, yeah. and... Uh, Krakow, not Warsaw. Warsaw was never under the Habsburgs. Krakow, I'm sorry, Krakow, you're right. Krakow. Yeah, uh, Czechoslovakia uh, and uh, Prague and some and parts of uh, uh, Vienna, or Vienna was in there too. You look at the architecture, it's all great. You know, it's mm -hmm. really yeah. nice. It was not very, uh, uh, Vienna was damaged by the bombs and stuff like that, but uh, Bohe uh, uh, Budapest had a, had a cannon war going. They never had a bomb as such. So, but the trouble I think Budapest is on one side of the river, and Pest is on the Budapest. other side. Yeah, they, they were the they were the artisans of the world yeah. over there. Yeah, you know, and the musicians because Mozart. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they they still Haydn. have a couple of memorials up there where you know the shells fell. But the only thing that happened in Prague, though. Go back a little bit. Or there was no damage there at all, except when the Nazis left, they decided they had to show that they were there. They burnt one church down. Mm. <laughs> and Just, it, one? It, Just one. That was yeah. it. You know, Just one. It, it, didn't do, it didn't completely demolish it, but they have it as a war memorial to well, show that it uh, was there. But the other one there is they have a beautiful clock there. That tells the hours, and mm. you have a crowd there at, at noon every day because oh. of the parade of animated oh, the figures, yeah, yeah. Figurines yeah. And all that yeah. stuff. It's really a, a yeah. sight to see. Now yeah. the uh, a lot of that, which we just talked about, the architecture, a lot of that sort of stuff shows up in uh, that the, the film, The Third Man, is filmed in, in, in uh, Harry Vienna. Lime, and yeah. you just can tell exactly Vienna. what you're talking about. Orson Very, uh, Wells. a lot of uh, you know, uh, you know what else shows masonry up in and. There? Uh, I was going to say is he has, uh, uh, Harry Lime, uh, Orson Welles, has a meeting with Joseph Cotton, and yeah. they're in a, where are they at? You mean in the sewers? The, no, the, no, the, the no. The grand finale's in the sewers. Vienna? Yeah. yeah. They're uh, in on the, the uh, Ferris wheel. They're on the Ferris, Ferris wheel. wheel. Yeah. Right. Yes, yes. And it's like the original Ferris wheel where they had separate cars. Big, yeah. Big yeah. cars, yeah. And ours were, you know. They seated like 36 or so. You know, they were almost like a railroad car, you know. Sorry. But the other thing I was going to say is, you know, when you were talking about controller and treasure, all that, <clears throat> does anybody realize how important mm -hmm. the position of controller is, or comptroller, as you would say? They well, we're going to ponder that during our break, though. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll we're just going to signal it. No, I, we'll be right I back, gang. Learn how to ponder. After these mm -hmm. Now, for a brief intermission, you're listening to Meet the Chicago oh, yeah. Historians. We'll be you right back. Get room to get by. Yeah. I tell you what, if the Nazis burned a church, you can bet your ass. Mean an awning over your front, side, or back door, or your windows? How about a canopy for your carport or a patio cover over your patio so you can enjoy being outside in case of rain? All you have to do is call Awnings and More, and Raphael Bogus will drive over, measure up whatever you need, and go from there. You can call Awnings and More at area code 773-710-710. 8403 or 847-890-1447. So if you need awnings for your windows or doors, call Raphael Bogus at Awnings and More at area code 773-710-8403 or 847-890-1447. Now, Raphael also installs hand railings for your front, side, or back steps. You must be safe when you go up and down the steps, especially in bad weather. So for awnings or handrails, call Raphael Bogus at area code 
710-8403 or 847-890-1447. Again, awnings and more for awnings and handrails. Call Raphael Bogus at 773-710-8403 or 847-890-1447. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking. What were you just mentioning about? Do you? Were you? I was. You know, this is Ken Little, yeah. the dean of the uh, of the entire historical <coughs> movement here. The, the dean. Okay. The dean, yeah. Actually. Uh, is that is that right? Yeah. Sounds it, excellent. It could be. Perfect. Well, when I see chief. The dean Chief of Chicago history. Uh, you're in trouble, dean. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> uh, you know, in looking, uh, you know, through fire department general orders, every once in a while. The city comptroller or controller would 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 uh, send a letter to the to the fire commissioner hmm. to the effect that uh, every uh, expenditure of the city has to be approved by the controller. Every the controller is the only one who can uh, actually um, assign uh, uh, what would you call it like. Uh, uh, bonds and uh, and uh, and really is responsible for the city paying you know uh, uh, everything from paychecks to you know to rent to you know and and if you don't follow the the city guidelines that are in the budget you have to pay yourself and <laughs> they would say it I don't hmm. know if you've ever remembered those I, no, I don't yeah. I don't remember yeah. that kind of yeah. yeah yeah they they uh, and they had a situation where the city, uh, the fire commissioner, uh, try or, or was in the process of running an apartment, some uh, an office space downtown in Chicago, and they signed a, a lease, and it came to the city controller, and he just said, "There's no money in the budget for it. If you want to go ahead, you, you you can go ahead, but you have to pay for it yourself. Mm. So let's stop that." Which which commissioner was that? Uh, I'm not going to say, but it was Albright. Commissioner yeah. Gordon. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Gordon. Oh, it was Albright. Oh, it was Albright, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they they wanted to set up uh, a number of his. Uh, you know, I think I, I do remember yeah. now that you mentioned they, that. They, they wanted to evaluate um, uniforms and turnout coats and that kind of stuff, and they thought they would set up an office and have people uh, come in and, and demonstrate and, you know, and et cetera. Yeah. The, city, the city controller said... <laughs> It, there's no money in the budget. You know, you can mm. you can do it if you do it on and, and pay for it yourself. Who, who was the city controller? Do you, you know, remember? No, I don't recall, but uh, I didn't realize the authority that he had. There's, yeah. there's a little bit of a problem with that because t t at today's paper, uh, our fair hair mayor had to return $7,000. Apparently, he expended it and nobody knew about it until the Tribune brought it up hmm. and I think a total of twenty three thousand dollars yeah well that campaign was, that funds. Was for yeah for some of his politicizing and his trips and you know yeah. uh, having his well, the, uh, oh, he's, police guard well, with him well d just for people who are listening just to say well you know the, the mayor or the alderman they can go out and spend money etc they can't spend any money that isn't approved by the controller. He keeps track. There's a certain amount of money in everybody's budget, police department, et cetera, you know. Does he verify that it's okay? Is that it? He, Yeah, he yeah. has to verify that the money has actually been put aside for that purpose, you know. And if it isn't, you can't spend it. You know? Where does the word come from? Comptroller? I don't you know. know. John would probably yeah. know. It's it sounds a funny like word because it's it's... It's pronounced differently than what it's spelled. It's yeah. like the gubernatorial yeah, situation. Like Goober, right, yeah. maybe out of yeah. black. Goobers, yeah. those are goobers are uh, yeah. peanuts, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. well, the, 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 only, uh, the only one I have to I disagree with you on is the water apartment and with the air, air uh, port. 
first of all, they're enterprise departments, which means they're not, they don't have to go through the city to do their expenditures. However, when you read the budget, you could swear that they're part of the city budget system because the fact is that every time uh, they're talking about this, that, and other things, but if, if you look at the budget, the water department has its own budget. They say so much money coming in, so much money going out. Of course, they don't always tell you where the money's going out to, but... The, well, and the reason the, for that, John, is because there's federal money involved there. Go the on. airport and the water department. Yeah, yeah but... It's they, all federal they, money. No, it's not all federal well, money. Well, it's not all federal well, money. It's supposed to come much, up. They have to, yeah, they have to take care of, of well, things well, there. Well, yeah. technically, technically, as far as the water department's concerned, it's user fees. In other words, they can, they can take out loans on future revenue. Mm -hmm. And then you're building the, the water system. I'm not, and then you got the sewer department separate. Although now it's the same again. Years yeah. ago, remember, they used to have a sewer water department. Yeah. And it was yeah. Well, we still, we still have a sewer yeah, but water the, bill. But the, the fact now, that now that it's that, water management. Yeah. 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 At yeah. one time it was... I think under Burn was split, oh. and part oh. of the reason it was split because I guess the suburbs were complaining about that they about were paying the for the sewage, which had nothing to do about with the their charges. Yeah, the sewage yeah. charges. And now, how, how or other, they managed to reemerge the two departments again, and uh, probably the corruption went along with the original. Well, there's always there's another reason for dividing departments is if you create two departments, you now have two offices of director that you can give, and then you have yeah. two offices of deputy director and yeah. assistant yeah. director yeah. Well, and that's assistant that's deputy directors, and I mean and you a lot of a lot more of people go along to with position. it. You know. well, a lot yeah. of people don't realize that that you know we don't really run we the city doesn't really run the airports, the federal government does. Yeah. And they pay for the salaries, they pay for the equipment, and they pay for anything. Yeah. And I don't blame them. No. They well, want to keep track of, yeah. of things. Well, you know, again, you can, again yeah. to some degree, you're, you're wrong because the fact yeah. is that no, landing no, fees no. pay for a lot of that stuff. No, what, whatever it does. Yeah. It might be below. federal control because it's a federal aviation, takes care of all the flight problems and everything else. But the actual infrastructure is local. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. You, you know what, you know what, Al, what might really be the difference is that both departments you're talking about, water and uh, aviation, they really don't know how much money they're, they're, they're going to uh, collect. You know, water fees can change aviation depending. Just imagine now when the airport was shut down for what was it, 10 days or 7 days or something like that. That affects their earnings. So yeah. they really don't, it isn't like the fire department, okay, you have $100 million to, you know, to operate, mm -hmm. and you can't yeah, exceed it, that, you know. Well, you're, I'm you're sure right. that you're, we water. You're right, you're right. Yeah. But the fact is, it's still enterprise operation. Is that what you mean by enterprise? You're right. Yeah. You know, it, it, it uh, technically, it's, it has, well, they, all right, they, they do yeah. a lot of cheating. Oh, I, uh, you keep seeing, saying oh, I know. Cheating. So I cynical. Yeah, so cynical. I, cynical, <laughs> but truthful. Yeah. <laughs> Are you suggesting that here in Illinois, that yeah, could, the I, government I might not that. be 100% above yeah. board but, you and know, ethical? They, they, they shock. Have, yeah. shock. 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 Shock to find that gambling is yeah, going exactly. on. Yeah, You're winning, so, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you very above much. Above what board? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you, you realize that the water department pays for, has a water bill John. comes to them? <laughs> Don't ask me to don't is don't, it, don't, don't even get involved with that. They but have a water meter there, and they read the water meter. What are we doing? Well, uh, my, my yeah. bill showing up last time too, and I didn't, I didn't oh, sprinkle oh, all summer long. Didn't yeah. Have oh to. yeah, oh yeah, I know. Didn't have to. Same with me. Didn't have to. But, but you know this. Yeah. This is uh, you know we we looked at this and said you got to be kidding me. Why are is there a water bill sent to the water department which has to essentially because they're using water. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Yeah. No, wait, wait. Over analyzing yeah. something. You, you must have yeah. seen the no, sign that says there is no good reason for it. It's just our policy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. no. yeah. It's tradition. They, they, it's tradition, there, yes. Don't blame tradition. They were supposed <laughs> to change the water meter, and they couldn't get the valves to, sh to tighten off enough long to change the water meter. So they said, oh, the hell with it. So they kept the water meter running. And the first question that came out is, 
why do you have a water meter here in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but by the way, uh, various firehouses had uh, uh, water recording devices so that they could keep every, track. I think every every one fire. Had, yeah. yeah. Well, Chuck Tenton had one. Time had one but, a guy uh, had come in and yeah, and, and uh, they would they would rec- every Saturday. I think we had to change the. Uh, <laughs> It was, yeah, it was well, a it, disc it, that was in there and, and yeah. it recorded, you know, with stylus. By the way, one of the funny things is, you know, in front of Engine 78's house, which is across from Wrigley Field, they have a, a hydrant there and they got a bubbler on top. And people, and of course, the water is running continually in the summertime. They say, well, isn't that a waste of water? And they say, no, you know why we have that bubbling there? That indicates how much pressure we have. If it's down, then we know there's not that much pressure, water mm-hmm. pressure throughout our district, you know, which is all bullshit. But put your money in the square box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got a ten yeah. second delay. Yeah, we got but a ten. The, we, the yeah, thing, John. <laughs> but the other thing you got to do is they have to flush, especially the peripheral water hydrants. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you build up <laughs> crap in there, and it, it contaminate the water. Yeah, I found that out one year that they are uh, having a little trouble, and uh, they had trouble I, with you. That's you know, they, got, they always had trouble with me. But the, the deputy commissioner comes up. He said, "We well, got this odor coming in." I said, "I don't understand why, because we don't have any odor coming out of the plant. It's once it gets out the district." And I asked if they flushed the hydrants. And she said, no, they haven't been flushing the hydrants lately. Mm. Duh. Duh. The next thing you know, all of the odor went away. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. So. Well, then, then, <laughs> our fl- then our, we flush hydrants once a year. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, to. Uh, in particular, uh, where you oh. have dead-end streets, the little streets oh, yeah. that are only and a block long. And where we had long. projects and, and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. of them. We, we've, we've right, right now, they are doing water uh, uh Flushing. Well, no, they, they are replacing the piping system yeah. Yeah. on yeah. Rockwell between uh, uh, Montrose and oh, up probably by, up uh, by you. Uh, yeah, yeah Lawrence. Yeah. And uh, we had a notice this morning that that the water would be shut down. Yeah. And this is a private outfit doing oh. this. Oh. And uh, how long will uh, the water be shut down, Billy? Well, they they yeah. tell you uh, until four o'clock. Yeah. Oh. But, oh yeah, uh, it's yeah, what it's day? I, yeah. No, I no. called the fire. They're, they're, I called them, and I called the fire alarm office and said, no. uh, "You know, we have a water shut down over here." Oh, what is that? <laughs> she said, "What is that?" And I told her, and uh, I, I, well, the water shut down. You know, it, it was like, "Well, so what?" I said, "Well, there's no water <laughs> in the fire hydrants <laughs> yeah, here, right. sweetheart." Would you please? Well, I'll notify the water department. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I said, no, the Thanks. water department, department knows notify you us. are supposed to notify the fire companies around here so that they know. Right. Oh. Let, yeah. And then she hollered, and I thought, oh, my God. You uh, you must have been talking to, to the police dispatcher aid. Not no, I wasn't. Well, yeah. you do. You call 971313. I was going to say, uh, they still got that number, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. It's a P.O. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one remember. three one three two. Bo five no, one three no. one three. Yeah, yeah. 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 The other one. Wow, you learn something every day. No. The other one. Wait a minute. One one. I was talking. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, the other one. It's just as dumb. Is uh, one year we had a real hot summer and a lot of water usage stuff like that and. Ninety five. And yeah. The the mayor said, "Well, we got to cut our budget five percent." So why did I include the water department? I don't know, but it did. And so they had to go and get parts for the filters system. And the commissioners rejected it. And at that time, we needed a million gallons more of water. You would have been out of water because of the fact that the the, uh, filters are starting to go down because the parts broken. So this is the idea of how some of the stupidity goes up and down the line there because, hmm. you we, know. We have the same thing in the, in the fire department. That's what I'm just saying, yeah. 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 You know, they but, don't buy a fire truck for five years, et cetera. You know what? <laughs> that impacts, you know, then they'll buy five or something. they say, yeah, they all wear out at the same time. Yeah. 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 Of course. Anyway. No, the, I, I, still I, have the rec- I still have the record of the most usage in one day. 
Uh, I was on, on duty. And usage and I of what? Usage of water? Water, water usage. We we got, had nine pumps in our our building, uh, and I had eight of them running. You're very good. Ray. And, Did uh, you tell Guinness about this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were all the hydrants <laughs> out there. Oh, that. yeah. All the hydrants were rolling full blast. That was the day everybody blast. had their hydrant turned on. Yeah. Th after, the hi after that, they figured out, oh, we all turned the hydrants down a little no. bit. I wonder so if it was somebody from the water department that thought up that stupid idea of changing the the hydrants. The bonnets with the, the, bonnets, uh, with, the with the magnetic. Oh my God! Yeah, do you have that, that was the most road? Did you ever have thing? They never consult, consult the firemen, did they? No. Well, what yeah. was the rationale for that? To water keep usage. the uh, to, well, no, it was to keep them yeah, turned on. Usage. It yeah. was to keep the kids oh, and okay. the neighbors from turning them on, okay. and and not only for the kids, it, it's but to flood out the neighbors' yeah. basements. Yeah. You and know. it isn't the kids that turn them on either. It's the oh, no, that it's come out know. there Some with kids the have a special wrench to be able to turn them on. Yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah. minute yeah. they came out with either the magnetic or the other one, yeah. the heck, I forget what we call the other one, it was the, they, they had an answer to that in yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Well, the other, the other problem was the, the suburbs that immediately adjacent to it sometimes used the uh, Chicago water hydrants, and so you can't turn the hydrants on, then they're in trouble again. Mm -hmm. Same reason. Which reminds me, um, yes. we're going to have to move on shortly, yeah. but uh, if there's H2O on the inside of a fire hydrant, what's on the outside? K9P. Oh. Folks, you're listening to the... <laughs> 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 this is the <laughs> fire plug well, hour, we ladies. Just in case anyone's <laughs> wondering, you're yeah, listening yeah. to the fire plug sure report. Disclaimer we, we just liquidated that quarter hour. Yeah, right. So, anyway... Yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas, we Jim. You just yeah, talked about, Christmas just show, talk about right. saving money. Uh, what does anyone think of uh, uh, our new governor-elect? He's not going to take a salary or a pension? Is anything to that true? Any, what, well, I heard the other happen. day, and it's not an official uh, proclamation, but he, uh, he hollered into Hiram Grau, who's the director of the state police, cut 20%. Of what? Really? Of, the of his budget. Yeah. Really? Hmm. yeah. Cut and 20%. Well, 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 and he well, wants to pay to fix up the governor's mansion in Springfield yeah. too. Well, well you know, he's, yeah, he's he has got the money. he, he no, has so said he, for? he has he, he, said he, that he <laughs> that he has been briefed since he was elected. I guess he now is getting briefings beyond what was available to him as a candidate. Oh, sure. And he said well, that the boxers. situation is even worse than it was yeah, than right. he thought it was. Mm -hmm. And you know, the simple fact is, the only way the state is going to dig itself out of the hole that it's in is by cutting spending. I mean, right. there's no other. Uh, the, there are only two ways: government. You either raise taxes or you reduce spending. Yeah, raise taxes. And I'm is, hoping is, that his thrust is going, to, and he's indicated his thrust is going to be yeah. on cutting spending. Yeah. Well, uh, that may be shocking to some people in Springfield. The idea of actually cutting yeah. spending hasn't been the order of the day in Springfield for a yeah. long time. I've heard of but raising taxes is self defeating because Of course it is. I'm 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 in I'm not in any way in favor of raising taxes. I'd like to cut the more, taxes. The higher the taxes the less people spend. Of and course. Consequently yeah. you don't have Plus more I'm just saying that there's only two ways government can manage. It yeah. either it either increases the amount that it extracts from the taxpayers or it disciplines itself and begins and begins reining in the the, the profligate spending well, that, uh, that we see down in Springfield. Uh, old economist that a lot of people don't like is uh, Samuelson used to write that there's two ways of controlling the economy: one taxes, and the other one's interest rates. Shoot the CPA. You know, <laughs> if you increase the, you'll slow the, if you increase the taxes, you'll slow it down. If you increase the interest rates, you slow it yeah, well, down. Well, he's talking in terms of the effect government has on the economy, but I'm just yeah. talking about the budget. I mean, the state well, is the state has the been spending way. money that it doesn't have. Yeah, right. You cannot keep spending money you don't have forever. Eventually, yeah. you hit the wall. The federal government can do it because it prints the money and yeah, creates it, the money. Yeah. The states, and states and local government can't they can't yeah. print money. England England years ago <laughs> found out that. High taxes don't count because at one time they were taxing about 95 percent. I think it was on well, the so rich. So did we. We had 90. Yeah. We had 90. Yeah. We had 90. Yeah. 91 percent was the top and rate. And they here found in the out when they cut taxes, they made more money. Sure. Yeah. Oh, Why? Sure. So more that, people are working. More yeah. salaries. Greater salaries. Yeah, more people are contributing into it. Yeah. The yeah. first yeah. supply side it's not tax brain, cut brain came surgery, from John rocket F. Science Kennedy. Or yeah. John Reagan got all that abuse for 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 across huh. the board tax cuts, but John F. Kennedy. 
proposed an across-the-board tax cut in the 60s, right. and he said a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm. He says if you stimulate the economy, everybody will benefit. Wasn't well, there, uh, like in the Harding administration, something like that in the 20s sure. also? Yeah. But, yes. but nobody ever... And he never gets credit no, for it. No, yeah. no, yeah. no. The, well, because the taxes had gone up so high during the First World War, when Harding came in, he cut taxes. That's one of the reasons yeah. things boomed in the 1920s. Yeah. Well, the other thing you go The roaring 20s. Yeah. The roaring 20s. The other thing you're going into now is, you know, Everybody's complaining about uh, businesses going overseas. Now, they got the new LCD light bulbs and the uh, compact fluorescents. Everything's made in China. Mm-hmm. I don't comprehend why some of this stuff is not made here in the States. Because uh, both of them have, yeah, I know. But there's a lot, the, the federal government itself <coughs> is advocating going overseas for manufacturing purposes. Then they go around nope. and complain about all the co- uh, jobs going overseas. They yeah. don't complain. Uh, they they keep, go on they keep a electing the same ones. They get talking on both sides of their mouth at the same time. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. They, they, they hey, call it to, uh, yeah. fork a tongue. Anyway, uh, we, we started out with this business about uh, the government-elect and salaries. We seem to have some uh, precedent for this. Didn't we have a guy named Morris B. Sachs, sort of as city... Treasurer for a dollar right. a year, mm-hmm. right? Right. Well, I, I he think was a popular a law, figure though, that, in the 1950s. He was always. Yeah. I mean, I was a little kid. I remember Morris B. Sachs was I'm always sure. on television yeah. with yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Morris yeah. B. Yeah. Sachs yeah. Hour. Yeah. Yeah. Amateur yeah. Hour. Yeah. yeah. He started out. He was door to door salesman. He did very well. Self made man. The Irish neighborhoods. Yeah. He used to sponsor the St. Patrick's Day Parade. His yeah. sidekick on TV was Bob Murphy. <laughs> so I mean, and here was a guy who was uh, what, what he was worth. What about eight or ten stores around town or something yeah, like that? He yeah. had a number of them. I know, Rogers, and he yeah. he uh, yeah. The, the big one of his stores was at Sixty Third Place in Halstead, and yeah. that's yeah. He yeah. Had I his applied for a job there. Huh? I applied for a Did job. You, yeah. they didn't hire me because I was going back to school the next year. Oh. So yeah. his his mm-hmm. clientele was the. Middle man, was yeah, the, the middle middle uh, class uh, class yeah, man, yeah. Mm-hmm. and for the family, you know, yeah. the, it was a family business. Yeah. Now here's something I heard. Maybe you didn't yeah. ever hear this, but yeah. neighbor told me, Morris B. Sachs. If you was in World War II and you go in, you got a little, uh, you got a tab running at the store. He wipe it off. Hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 Let me oh. ask one question. Uh, sure. Is there a state law that requires you to? T- to take your salary? You can give it back. I'm not, you have to I'm not certain. I mean, I, I think no, I think you can return your salary no, I, I to the state. I didn't say you can't return it. I just say there used to be a rule at the federal level that you had you had to be paid something, which is why during... A penny during, a year, maybe. During, yeah. yeah, it was a dollar, dollar a year. year. During, uh, during, okay. during the Depression of World War II, FDR brought in a lot of wealthy individuals who didn't need the salary, and they called them dollar-a-year dollar men. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was a law that you had to be compensated to some extent, and I guess maybe a dollar was yeah. the minimum. Okay. So it was legal. There was this term dollar-a-year man. What's his name? Is a legal entity. Yeah. Because that, that's what state of Illinois paid for uh, Dunning when uh, Cook County uh, relinquished it. There have been other officials that, you know, people say, well, yeah. it's a drop in the bucket. Uh, well, that's true, name? but at least you're demonstrating they, some they, willingness they take to. take that money and they give it to a charity or somewhere because yeah. that money is budgeted. Sure. Yeah, sure. You oh, know, yeah. It's you can return it, though, can't you? Huh? Can't you return money too, like for the Fed? If you want to pay more, you can. I'm not going to do it. Do you it's want to charity. screw up their books? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> no, it's already been done. <laughs> it's already, yeah. I think they it's too late now. Ch- <laughs> yeah. it, consider that a charity because well, they do allow charity donations to the federal government or governments. I remember when Warren Buffett, it was, a, it was a big news story that Warren Buffett was in favor of the tax increase when, when, when taxes were right. going up. And he said, you know, I should pay more money, and I don't mind. And, you know, Warren Buffett could, could write a check for a billion dollars to the tra- any time he wants. I mean, if, if, he, if yeah. he's that much in favor of government spending, sure. it's fine for him. But why does he tell everybody else that they have to pay higher taxes? Yeah. Just because he thinks it's a good idea. Listen, you know? It's, it's, you know, that's big money people. And, and they are going to take that money and donate it to a charity or non for profit and then write it off on their income tax. Well, yeah. that's, that's I had a brother in law that was a multimillionaire. Yeah. And and he had, you know, businesses that you know, Gene, what do you got? You got he owned like half of some movie 
uh, uh, studio. Oh, it wasn't Sony. What are you going to do yeah. with you know with that? Well, well here here's and, the and and he you know it was all a write off. Yeah. Well, here's here's the catch on that too. That's what I you're, hope. You're, no catch uh, on that. No, and, I'm talking about uh, what's his name that uh, runs uh, Microsoft. But anyways, he's got that big charity thing going. <clears throat> Four billion dollars a year or something like that in charity. There's a choice there. Either he pays that in taxes or he pays that in charity. So, so this way he's got control over the, the money. That's why he, they do that. Yeah. You can also give it to a charity that happens to support your, your political uh, well, ideas. Yeah, some sure. of these charities have, have a, a political axe. They may not be openly yeah. political, but they have. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say, we're talking about the Office of Controller or Comptroller, as it's sometimes referred to. Apparently, the, the, the Attorney General, uh, Lisa Madigan, has announced that the current governor, Pat Quinn, who will be leaving office in a few weeks, can fill the vacancy for the few remaining weeks of Judy's current term. And the, in, the incoming governor, Bruce Rauner, can then appoint someone for the, the new term that begins uh, in 2015. But uh, she says that there will have to be a special election right. yeah. two years into the, to the term to fill then the remaining. She said she, you shouldn't she be able to appoint for yeah. four full years. She would like she a special yeah. election, and they yeah. figure and maybe there could four be people could actually be the comptroller. In this four-year term. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Four well, people. She, she, that sounds she was signed like and like uh, uh, volunteered to take the job. She went over and talked to the governor. It yeah. was on the news. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, so, I mean, there's, feelings not between her But and there's her, less yeah. than a month now remaining. Is the, new, uh, the new officials come in, I think, on January the 12th or the 13th is when yeah. the inauguration takes place. So there's actually less than a month left of the, of yeah. the expiring but, yeah. term. But I yeah. think the job has to be filled, though, right? Yeah, yeah, because there's a legal requirement there be yeah. a comptroller to, uh, yeah, to approve the to checks approve and the, approve yeah. the expenditure. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. otherwise the yeah. state can't. As far as abolishing or uh, combining the two, wouldn't that take a constitutional well, that's, Sure, because they're they're, they are called constitutional, yeah. constitutional offices. Yeah. 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 They are in the state constitution. You have to amend mm -hmm. the constitution. What you just said made me think of, you know, you know uh, McMurphy and O'Reilly are talking on the phone. McMurphy says, did you hear Christmas is going to be on Friday this year? And uh, O'Reilly says, I sure hope it's not the 13th. Da -da 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 -da. Break. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, for a brief intermission, you've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. What day is that going to be? How are the tires on your vehicle? Do you need motor oil? Or transmission fluid? Or power steering fluid? How about antifreeze? What about the wiper blades? Are they in good, sharp condition? Is the washer fluid in your tank full? How good is your battery? Do you need to replace light bulbs? Well, the place to pick up all these items is at Berkeley Auto Supply, 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. Stop in and see Tom, and he will get any part or supply you might need for your vehicle. He has every tool, part, or supply you might need from the front bumper to the rear bumper, from the top of the roof to the bottom of the chassis. You can call Tom at area code 708-544-8350. And they are located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. Tom's hours are Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock in the evening. On Saturdays, he's there from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. And he's even open on Sundays from 10 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's Berkeley Auto Supply, 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. He is just east of Wolf Road and west of Mannheim Road, about two miles on the south side of the street. 
you can call 708-544-8350 for parts, tools, and supply. That's Berkeley Auto Supply, 708-544-8350, and he's located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. Now, back to our show. What were you what? saying, John? <laughs> we what, were t- I, I wanted to, one, before we got away, I, I, I appreciated what our, our uh, station director, John DeVita, had to say about uh, Judy. Judy, of course, gave me my uh, connection with the old WJGG radio station. She was doing her program called The Judy Show, and she was running for office at that time, and she had commitments she couldn't make every week. And so she had me on as a guest one week, and at the end of the show, she said, John, would you like to come on and, and just alternate with me? We'll do the show on alternate week. So that was how I got started with WJJG. Uh, and then after a while, she turned the show over to me altogether because her demands on her time were such she couldn't do the program anymore. And I took over that afternoon half-hour show once a week, and then from that, uh, John had me on in the mornings. I did a couple of mornings from, from, uh, from 8 to 10 and uh, got my start here on our Meet the Chicago Historian. So it was thanks to Judy that I got connected with this yeah, fine excellent. group and, and with John they, DeVita. Do they still call it the Judy Show? I'm, I'm going to say the same thing. Uh, well, I, and I never came up with a formal name for it. I didn't call it, I didn't, I, but, but in any event, uh, I took over the program. And uh, I would always, but I would always acknowledge that it had been her show. I would always mm-hmm. acknowledge her because I felt it was her program, and I wanted to give her a little bit of a boost. So could every, you, uh, at least once in every program, I'd mention Judy's name could, and that yeah. she could was you call the originator. Punch? Of the no, I did not. I did not. I, uh, much as the temptation might have been, I, I, re- I resisted. Yeah, I, that, I went uh, to a, I went to a political convention with Judy. Uh, I forgot where it was at. And she was a character. She she'd always be out there, you know. She was a she she had a, a terrific personality yeah. to be a public figure. She she was very outgoing and and, uh, and knew how to relate to people. Every every people like Judy. People yeah. like yeah. Judy. I, I, I always I liked her hair dye job. She admitted this was no color known in nature. <laughs> she just wanted to be distinctive. She, she loved that. dogs. They were always at her at her office. She had this uh, this this office in uh, in Riverside in North Riverside. And uh, she always had dogs running around. She was a, she was an eminent dog lover, and mm-hmm. always had. She had a, a couple of good friends of mine, uh, Charlie and Millie Slazak, were her alter egos. They were they helped her in all of her offices. Uh, Charlie has passed away a number of years ago. He was also a World War II veteran, but Millie is still alive. She ran the office for many years. Very close friends of, of Judy through the years. That's Ms. like Walter Slazak. Same. Same. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. They were. They were. Uh, Charlie. They had. They had operated a business uh, in Cicero. Civic leaders, community chest, uh, Rotary, all the organizations. There. Very prominent. Very. Very nice people. Very nice people. The Slazaks. Very close to Judy. Uh, on a little sidebar to what I just said. Sidebar. Walter Slazak, the actor. Yeah. Uh, Kids, you can look him up in the dictionary or something. Great <laughs> character. You mentioned Punch book. and Judy. He's in the anyway, Inspector kids General. don't know who that is. His either. father, they can look that one up. His father, Leo Slazak, had been an opera singer, you know. Yeah. So he's the one that actually happened to. He was doing some Wagnerian thing where he's supposed to sing his aria and fall back and land on this mechanical swan, which will take him off to Valhalla, right? So he's singing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the swan went by, I know what you're gonna and he, he looked missed, over he and said the swan, to the yeah. audience, what time is the next swan? <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? What more are you going to do? You know. So, Anyway, um, we got to mention about this business with uh, all this protesting going on now, about uh. all, these police, all, the, all these police killings. And, uh, of course, each case is an individual to be judged on its mm. own. But it, it still reminds me a little bit of the, it's kind of nostalgic of the 60s with these marches and people, certain people are there, uh, uh, professionals, and uh, there has to be a certain amount of organization. When you look, I mean, these things happen spontaneously with all these beautiful signs done up. And uh, Anybody have any feelings on that? Uh, yeah. Does anybody know what profiling is? Well, you're, I was oh, a yeah. cop for 34 well, years, I don't know what yeah. profiling is. Well, it, it, nobody did know what profiling was until somebody got the idea that you can't do it. And now <laughs> yeah. they are saying, well, now it's all right. 
<laughs> was, you know, now it's all right. Yeah, like we said, they, they didn't know until somebody well, said, right. can, can I, I, can do I it? just ask one question? Now, Jack, you were, you were a uniformed serving police officer of, the, uh, of one of the greatest cities in the nation, the city Where's of Chicago. That? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah. Is it, when, when, when you tell an individual you're under arrest, does that open up a negotiation? Does does he then get to raise raise objections and and uh, dispute with you? And could could you tell us the procedure when when an well, individual is placed under arrest? Raise his hand. Yeah. Now here, when Over we talk about head. the power of arrest, uh, we we usually mean taking into custody, charges, booking, etc. Arrest means to stop. If we were kids, we, we were kids around 63rd and Ashland, we must be cutting through the alley the police would stop. The cops would stop us and check us out. That's the arrest, the stop part. Right. Okay? Uh, huh. So, I mean, you, you can't have anything optional like that. I mean, so much of what people would look at as being hassling, we're hassling us, is just part of the job, checking something out, and that's, that's the way it works. No, there's no negotiating. That's for the judiciary or whatever, you know. But it's all a part of an investigation also. I mean, think, how often, when, when we're always stopped for something as kids, I think, probably. Yeah. We? Probably. Yeah, I Cop, think uh, so. A police officer is just that. He's a peace officer. Right, that's a yeah. term. He's to keep right. the right. peace. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, know you, know you find in the state statutes, police officers are legally conservators of the peace. That's that's in the Illinois statute books. Yeah. What what the what their their title is? They're conservators of the peace. Yeah. You, you know where the word sh- sheriff came from, don't you? Or from England, the Shire. The Shire. They were they the were the, they were the Reeves of the Shire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Melville Cooper and Robin Hood, the High Sheriff of Nottingham. Mm-hmm. The man who wins the wins <laughs> the contest the will be Robin Hood. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, but that's that that date does go back to the Old English. Huh? Shire Reeves. Well, the, the problem mm-hmm. with the Old English. Robin Hood in general, he spoke a Saxon language because they were Anglo-Saxons or Saxons. As such. They were so Saxons. So maybe, yeah. maybe that's what's going uh, on uh, here now. Maybe these people you had, you are speaking the Normans. Anglo-Saxon. You then yeah. he had the Normans the Norman coming French. with a completely different language, and you know, so they they had this. A language problem, if nothing else. Well, we have that here. Yeah, well, I realize we that. have that here. Now, you know, that's but that's overseas. That's what we're we talking heard about. about right here yeah. in Ferguson and in well, Chicago and New York. But and, now, if you tell somebody they're under arrest, don't you have to say right away you have the right to remain silent? No, you give them the right. No, you right do not. Once you question somebody, they're under arrest. once you start questioning somebody formally, they do that on a lot of the okay. television shows. Just like Los Angeles Police Department would do it right away. But, I mean, so much of what gets okay. superseded, there's, I would say that I can venture to say, now, Bill, you had uh, plus your fire department experience, you had experience with the racetrack police, correct? Exactly. So you can, you can back me up on this one, but probably more than any other job, there's a blur between fiction and reality as to what goes on mm-hmm. and what you can or can't do or what, what actually happens. Wouldn't you say that's true? Exactly. You know, like, exactly. Uh, you know, like, why don't you shoot the gun out of Common his hand? Sense. Oh, yeah. 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 Why don't you I shoot the gun that. out of his hand? I uh, see that every so often now, uh, yeah. you know. Even shoot though, to wound, not People kill. have seen yeah. that well, in the West. Yeah, oh. they, they, no, no, they, they are trained to shoot to kill because the no. fact that there is, it's, it's just the way the Army is. You're not trained to wound. Wait a minute now. You're Hold it. Not that's, unless that's a difference. Mm. Your life is in. Or if you're using, we open up something here. I'm, I'm, Lloyd knows we could go for force. hours. If you want to hear criticism of the Chicago Police Department from myself, if Tom were here, however, the training about and the drilling of that which pertains to the use of deadly force, they were excellent on that. There is no such thing like uh, Richard J., the old old man Daly, said shoot after the wound. riots, and the, after Martin Luther King was killed. During shoot to we should shoot to kill arsonists and shoot to wound looters. Well, mm. you don't shoot to wound. If the, mm. Once the gun, bullet leaves, the gun, what if it doesn't wound them? What if it kills them? Yeah. So you better be justified in using deadly force you to You only use with. deadly force in very restricted circumstances, and if you're in those circumstances, you shoot to kill. Thank you. Well, as, or as my dad said, if you never point a gun at anybody unless you intend to kill them. And right. I never understood that as a kid, but, right. you know, that's really what you know, You also, you don't fire warning shots, which no. you see that in the old movies all the time I, I, where the cop can. says, stop you thief, can. and he fires yeah, a few you, bullets you into can. the you air. The thief runs faster, though. <laughs> come down somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was, as if those I was, bullets just keep going straight <laughs> up into the yeah. stratosphere and they never come down. I was an MP for two years in the military, you know. Now, for you young kids, that's military police. Police, yeah. right. Or, or my pal. It also stands for that. what that Broussard stood for. But ah. they carried a 45. Why? Why? Because the police were carrying a 38, and they oh. could maybe wound someone, et cetera, 
with the 45, you're going to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. And they only want one, one, uh, one uh, uh, you know, affidavit or one, uh, one statement from, and it's got to be yours, not theirs. And they just said if someone pulls a knife out or a gun, you pull out your gun and you shoot them. And, well, and, and, and that's exactly right. Uh, yeah. the, I went through sniper school, yeah. and that's what I was in the Army. Yeah. And we, we taught, and this, this guy in New York now, that the guy put a, a death gr- uh, grip on his neck. Oh, that, yeah. And that, you know, we were taught to kill people yeah. doing that. Yeah. And, and where else are you going to grab them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that this, is, this is just all like we are doing right here at the table. Yeah. You know, it's just going conjecture. around with all different objections. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and It's all conjecture. And conjecture. Our part. Police officer but, but has, has 30 seconds or less to make a decision about which then yeah. pundits and commentators and, and newsmen you, spend days, days and weeks John, and John, months pontificating. It's not 30 seconds. I said or seconds. less. I yeah. said or less. Much yeah. less. I yeah. said yeah. or less. I, I yeah. understand. And the way, that, and, well, and the way I understand that. What I'm well, saying, I'm what, gonna, my, I'll, my I'll, point I'll, is that he, ha- he has seconds to make a decision exactly. on yeah. which the reporters then spend the next six mm-hmm. months yeah. questioning whether he made the right decision. Well, yeah, yeah, and we were taught in the Army that if you have to do that, as Ken said, you don't use one bullet. No. You shoot yeah. and you, you use up your clip if you have to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if your life is in danger. Yeah. You know, so and, that, and that's a split second right. that you have to figure that out. You know, and under the circumstances that most of those circumstances come to right uh with the with the weather with your heart beating with whatever and you don't have and, time and he may have a gun he may have there may be other you you just don't have the time to do and you don't get no. to consult a lawyer really, no you can screw up and you don't yeah. get to consult cbs the really or the amazing York times or anybody the amazing else's. thing is the amazing thing is and there's no way to really document this say between eight o'clock friday in 10 minutes, and 2 in the morning Monday, how many incidents, say throughout the city or anywhere, <coughs> could there have been deadly force used and was it used? Right. I mean, it's avoided. Yeah. You know, there's no way yeah. of documenting that. I mean, but it is true. Now, there, there, there should seem, there seem to be more incidents. To, to how leave. many police officers have been killed in the line of duty since the beginning of the year or in the last Well, every, every year years nationwide, yeah. about 150. And more than that, John. Is I, it? I belong to cops. What yeah. is it? With a hundred, how much? Oh no, it's uh, way over three hundred. Is it now? I thought it was one hundred fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, whatever. And well, you don't hear the president say anything about that, though. That's he the point. He never sends anybody you to. Don't, you don't see any office. parades or demonstrations or. No. Well, Chicago is a perfect example. Yeah. The forty-five caliber gun was developed originally, I think, probably for in Philippine for insurrection. The Philippine yeah. insurrection. Yeah. It had what was called stopping that, power. You, if somebody came and charged right. that, you you shot them. They went down. The they went down. Yeah. They didn't go down. They went the other way. Well, the point the the, the, the army had been using revolvers up to that yeah. point, and the yeah. trouble is, you could you could hit hit him with a thirty eight slug, and he would keep coming. You right. could hit him several times. Mm-hmm. The forty five hit with such impact that it would knock yeah. the offender down. That was that was why the army the army continued using the forty five up through the Vietnam War. It's only yeah. very recently that yeah, they've gone to the nine millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I was watching a, a movie on TV. They were showing the snipers, and he was shooting a mile away. Wow! A, a fifty caliber bullet, a mile away. He went through a cinder block wall mm-hmm. and killed the guy behind it. And you see the blood splatter behind what, it. Fifty caliber, sure. Wow! Uh, over a mile away. Sure. What what, what bullet was it? 50 caliber machine oh, gun. F- oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, that's no, no. Rifle. It was a rifle? Oh, yeah. A 50 caliber rifle. Yeah. Wow. Like an elephant gun, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. 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 the Army had, they had 50 caliber machine guns. I in know. Them. Yeah. But this was a 50 caliber. I think they were spending uh, used uranium in there, too. So it had spent, a wall. Spent uranium, yeah. Hmm. So it, he, he had actually two shots. <laughs> First one, somebody was there. They told him he was shooting low. So he raised it up. Next thing you know, right through the wall, sure. mm-hmm. and you can see blood splatter. Wow! And this this was uh, that, that was one of the big things that uh, they advertised when the 357 came out. 
Jack oh, that, that penetration? That, yeah. that the 357 would go through Magnum. a car and stop a car. You know what? And I'll just toss this out. Uh, when I was at, in MP school, it was down in, uh, uh, across the Golden Gate Bridge from the, from the Presidio. We are up in a little town called Sausalito. And uh, we had a, a, a World War, most of our instructors were all World War II veterans. This was in the early 50s, 53, mm -hmm. 54. Anyway, this sergeant pulls a, a 45 bullet out and holds it like this. And then he has a, his 45 here and he cocks it, you know, and, he's, and he goes like this. He pulls the trigger and drops the bullet. He says, you know what? They will both hit the ground at the same time. Right. He said, this one will be a mile away. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if, if the v velocity is that. But can you imagine? Muzzle I mean, velocity. how long does it take for it to <coughs> drop a bullet? A second, second and a half yeah. or something yeah. like that. And this one, and it will go through. Well, you know, we all, we like, you know like John said, uh, uh, you know, the, w when you shoot up in the air, yeah, yeah, it's got to come down somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and every and so often, you know, like our big days, Fourth of July and mm -hmm. Halloween, people and, go out and all yeah. 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 do. And there have been people. New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. We're coming up on New Year's Eve when people yeah. traditionally yeah. go out and fire out a few rounds fire. into yeah. the air. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, uh, we used to always talk about when I was in the Air Force about the glide path of some of these fighter jets, and I said, "Hey, you got a glide path of a rock." <laughs> <laughs> if the engine goes out, they don't go very far. Well, in the movie <laughs> Stalag hey. Seventeen, I remember when the when the fellow says, "And and and the commandant warns all American prisoners not to be throwing rocks at low flying <laughs> German aircraft. <laughs> Anyone who does it will be thrown in the boob." <laughs> but you know, they, 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 you know, you look at especially the F one hundred four. <laughs> Thunder Chief, the Thud. Yeah, that was the F-105. The F-105 was the Thunder yeah, Chief, the, the Thud. The uh, 104. Wingspan uh, was uh, three foot on each side. And it had razor sharp leading edge on it. After a while they dulled it. They, they lost I don't know how many miles per, per uh, hour on that because the crew chiefs were getting hurt. Because they had covers on there. They didn't always put the covers on, you know. <clears throat> not, not everybody was that ambitious to do all the jobs <clears throat> they were supposed to do. But they, they uh, that, th <coughs> that thing had no glide path. You know, it, it goes like a bullet. It, you know. The minute, minute it lost power, minute it lost power, it, it, it came like straight, yeah, dropped like a rock. Yeah. You were just talking before, Bill, uh, <coughs> about uh, the Magnum ammunition and uh, a 357 like the Colt Trooper or the uh, Combat Special from Smith and Wesson, they'll also house the 38 Special. So you could, we we're supposed to, you could use those. But I was out with one of my brother-in-laws in Western Kentucky. Went out to the strip mine area. We put up some bottles or whatever, shooting and whatever. And I had some Magnum ammunition in my. I shoot the bottle and nothing happens. What happened here? You know. Upon further review. It went through, it went but didn't right shatter through. it. It was went so right clean. Through. That's what, you know, that's how. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's yeah. how it is. You know. yeah. So that's actually too powerful for the city in a way, unless you should have some in case you got it. But, uh, this is the 44 yeah. Magnum, yeah. the most yeah, powerful I mean. handgun in the world. Yeah. It can well, that blow really your head clean <laughs> off. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the question you have to ask yourself is, do yeah. I feel lucky? Yeah, they, well, that's well once again, do you, uh, punk? See, <laughs> well, see, that's just where the, the blur between the job, the reality, Harry and the fiction Callahan. comes in. Yeah. Because Harry foiled what that that uh, 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 you know plane jacking and all this. Remember that? And he doesn't even have to write any paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. put the plane in takeoff position. <laughs> he, sh he killed a couple of. Uh, well, they were the hijackers or whatever, and you'd always shoot them right between the eyes. They, they never, they never do show. The aftermath of all of these, with all the blank but paperwork that has well, to be would be too done. boring for yeah. a film, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, they they at least show a little bit of it going. Well, the other thing that was real nasty in Vietnam, they used to use wooden bullets. Yeah. And it, or they wouldn't go that far, but they would do a hell of a lot of damage to the first to hit. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 the yeah, flechettes. Because yeah. infections would be yeah. un unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. How about silver bullets? Bump, uh, but, um, 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 but
But well, you got that but solar bullets for a mass many to kill werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the big Which thing, right? didn't happen too often. But, but who but was it, that you were ready. Yeah, but it, Don't it, you know? <laughs> He's the Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. Hail Silver. Oh, away. Away. But we we used to love those endings. He's a Chicagoan, too. They always right. ask the sheriff, okay. who was that he, man? He, he grew up in your neighborhood. It was always the same building at the end of the road, and, too. And <laughs> at, at mass yesterday, at the police mass, uh, I was introduced to a gal that, that uh, by, by Father uh, uh, Brandt, to a gal that painted six of these police horses that you see on oh, the street. Yeah. And they, yeah. And and she wanted to paint one as uh, the, the Lone, Lone Ranger's Ranger, horse, which would be silver, white, and and, and which so, would yeah, it'd be yeah, all white, white and silver. <laughs> and she said no, she she had to do it with all of the different colors, the colors. And, but to yeah. make it make it look a little bit of I trivia. Tell you what they they were some some real neat yeah neat horses out there, but. We had I had the wounded warriors that uh, that weekend just before that, and uh, uh, we we were downtown and we ran into I would say three or four and they were all messed up and they were already they, oh uh, yeah they were broken and they were oh they were, the yeah legs somebody's broke been off desecrating them and yeah. It, yeah and then they were tagging them and, and yeah, yeah oh, what a, and and these people worked really yeah, really yeah. Hard. yeah. she said that it took her. About four yeah. weeks to do one horse. Wow. That's that's casting pearls before swine, is what that is yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, the other thing what is a too. Neat thing. The yeah. other thing that was uh, talking about horses was that uh, Gene Autry, when uh, his uh, horse died, he had him stuffed. Champion. No, that was Champion. Roy Rogers. Oh, Roy Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Roy, Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Yeah. They were out on. Uh, Roy and Dale were on guests for Johnny Carson when that had happened. They had the taxidermist take care of. Uh, which was his horse. Trigger. Trigger. Trigger, yeah. And so Johnny says, when Roy dies, you're going to have him done and put him back on top of the horse. <laughs> two, two little bits of trivia. On the Roy Rogers show, Trigger got billing ahead of Dale Evans. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was Roy, Roy Rogers, Rogers and his wonder horse, horse, Trigger. Trigger. Dale, Dale Evans, Evans, Queen of the West. You know, so she <laughs> got, the Trigger oh, got, oh, and, oh, and the oh, other oh. thing is, is the, the Lone Ranger's horse originally was simply referred to as Big Fella. Yeah. In the early radio shows, it was Big Fella. When Silver Cup Bread that's became right. the sponsor, they wanted silver in the name of the horse, too. So that's so how the horse became yeah. silver. <laughs> but if you notice, the TV, even in the TV show, he will occasionally Don't tap the horse and say, Come on, uh, Big Fella. Yeah. Come right. on, Big Fella. If, if you're, if you're, talk, if you're, yeah. if you're talking fella. about Ooh, color, you know, you know the reason why the, the uh, Santa Claus uniform is red, don't you? Why? There we go. But it's some are related to the they conflate the red as the color of cardinals with no. the, the bishop why? because no. the, because Saint Nicholas was a bishop. No. Why? 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 That's the Co real. That's Cola the reason. was sponsoring. No. Yeah. I. No. Because no. 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 if you go to Europe, you got brown, you got blue, you got no, green. Traditionally, tradition was always traditionally red. red. Saint Nicholas. Yeah, anyway. When it was Saint Nicholas, the robes were traditionally no, red. Uh, not not all. Product. Not always. You go around oh. there, there are all kinds of colors Those on there. Those robes but, of the of the church were Coca -Cola all red. Coca-Cola early 20th century. Under. But remember I, this. Well, that goes back to 19th century, doesn't it? When, when yeah. Jack, when you mentioned uh, uh, yeah, Trigger. Well, Santa Claus. Coke Santa. had a lot to do with creating our image of Santa Claus. They had a cartoonist named Haddon Sunblom who did all of the great... He was a painter, wasn't he? All, yeah, he did all the like illustrator. Dad, I guess fact. illustrator would be the best term for him. He looked like me more but and more. He did those classic Santa Clauses that you see yeah. with the bottle of Coke, and he really filled out the image, our image of Santa mm. Claus, with the you know the big jolly. Yeah. Because if you go back to um, a visit from Saint Nicholas, you know Clement Clark Moore, he talks about Santa being a tiny well, elf. Saint Nicholas, a tiny, tiny elf, elf. Yeah. with eight tiny reindeer. And the illustrations show him as a little guy. He's a yeah. little guy. It was Thomas Nast, who was yeah. the cartoonist during the Civil War, who gave us the elephant for the Republican Party and mm -hmm. the donkey. He made Santa a full-life figure. Mm -hmm. And his illustrations in Harper's Bazaar, Harper's Weekly at that time, yeah, he, he brought Santa into a full-size figure. There's, there's uh, illustrations of Santa visiting the Union Army during the Civil War, mm -hmm. festooned with American flags. Santa's, you know, uh, very patriotic. Even Santa with a, 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 a red, white, and blue costume. His, flag, his, his uniform even has stars on it. 
But then Hatton Sunblom for the for Coke really kind of completed the picture by giving okay, us the image, the image well, that we But have. don't forget in Europe you got Father Christmas, Father Noel, Saint Noel, Santa, yeah. uh, Santa, uh, uh, Santa Claus, Chris in Kringle. I don't know what Chris Kringle. Chris in German, he's called the Christmas uh, Man. Yeah. Barack Obama, Weihnachtsmann. Yeah. Weihnachtsmann. Yeah. <laughs> I still love that Chris Kringle. I, that's, but, uh, I, used to, I sign all my Christmas cards. The three I write, um, <laughs> Chris Kringle. Yeah, the, but but in, even in Germany they have different names. You, you go to different areas. They call it uh, the. Uh, Chris Kendall. Chris Kendall, Mart. Yeah. yeah the, the angel, sort of an angel that they. Yeah, call it's it. like yeah. here in Chicago. Here, yeah. Chris Kendall, Mart. And that's that's a place to go, but I, that, not too many Germans there anymore. But that <laughs> oh, you know, D- to, to, is to there. get back to where Jack <laughs> said that uh, trigger was was stuffed, and and what what people do after uh, a, after a death, uh, and I won't mention any names. Uh, uh, we had a fire. A uh, person, fire ca- captain, uh, died here recently, and uh, uh, his wife, his widow, uh, gave me a call. And we we made all the arrangements and that with the pension board and so forth. And she said, uh, "Would you be able to get the front piece for his helmet? Somehow it got lost." And I said, "Sure, you know, I'll get one for you." And. Uh, uh, I said, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? Put it on the red. She says, oh no, we're going to have so and so cremated, and we're going to have the cremains put into the helmet and and, and sealed. Oh. And she said, and and our plan is later on, when I pass away, I will be cremated, and I will be put in. My cremains in, will be put into put in the helmet, his. and we will be together again. Yeah. <laughs> and and I thought, well, okay, you know, everybody <laughs> to their own. Sure. But then I'm I'm thinking, and I didn't want to, you know, get her upset or, or yeah. uh, you know, criticize whatever anybody yeah. wants. But I'm thinking to myself, I wonder after that happens, a few years go by, uh, and and the kids are going to look at the helmet. Some kid and say. Get rid of this. <laughs> yeah. Throw it in the Throw, yeah. What's all this uh, dust in what is, what yeah, is yeah, right. all this? Yeah. I always, whenever I hear about cremation, I always but think that of... Was, that was really, I thought something that was absolutely uh, just custom. Custom, yeah, custom made. Yeah. 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 And how heavy that helmet must be. Now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I always it's think of Frank, Frank Sinatra and, the, and Ocean's Eleven where they, they hit all the casinos oh, in yeah. Las Vegas. And then mm-hmm. they hide the cash <laughs> in the coffin of the, the one mm-hmm. member of the Eleven who collapses and dies of a heart attack. And when they're at the service and they hope to retrieve their money after the burial, they're sitting there in the chapel and they hear the hissing sound. And someone says, what's that? And the funeral director says, oh, the remains are being cremated. Yeah. What's the most interesting thing I saw, I was out watching TV again, and there was a funeral procession. They were burying a colonel, a cremains. Was he dead? Yeah. <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> <it was> cre- <laughs> Very good, they, Jack. They had the, uh, uh, the wagon. Uh, what do they call that? The uh, mean like the a hearse? The hearse? No. The caisson? Caisson coming in. Like they would have a normal... Military funeral. Military yeah. funeral. And they had this uh, coffin on there. And then when it got to the point where they were supposed to bury him, they opened the back and they carry out the cremains in a, in a uh, <laughs> container there. Small container. Yeah, yeah. sure. And That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. That, I thought that was a fascinating for some reason. Yeah. On that happy note, Rich. Rich. Okay, you've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and we thank you for it. We'll be right back. Heavy now this time. I was wondering. Exhibitors Carpet Service has changed their name to Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago, and their new location at 440 North Sheridan Road in Highwood, Illinois, called Carpet of Highwood. 
Stop in at Carpet Warehouse, located at 4300 West Montrose Avenue, and their phone number is area code 773-283-0100 or at 440 North Sheridan Road in Highwood, and that phone number is area code 847-266-1400. For carpets in your living room, dining room, bedroom, den, or family room, stop in at either location for a great deal. Once again, Carpet Warehouse, 4300 West Montrose Avenue, and our phone number is area code 773-283-0100 in Chicago, or Carpet of Highwood at 440 North Sheridan Road, and that phone number is area code 847 266 one four zero zero. Remember, if you need a carpet in your living room, dining room, bedroom, den, or family room, stop in at 4300 Montrose Avenue in Chicago. And once again, that phone number is area code 773-283-0100 or at 440 North Sheridan Road in Highwood, and that phone number is area code 847-266-1400 for a great deal on carpeting. Now back to our special holiday edition of Meet the Chicago Historians. Jack? Rich? Rich. <laughs> we're going to start off, we're going to try to get some, uh, uh, go around the panel and get some, what, you know, remember memories of Christmas in the past, and then we're supposed to have a, a special at about, uh, in about a half hour, report from Bob Trejak, who is the host of Paranormal Radio, all about the Christmas tree ship, the annual right. Chicago oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, Rich, you want to start off? What do you, uh, what Chicago, old days, memories? Uh, One of my big traditions? memories is, I'm not sure people are doing this much anymore, is going downtown invariably the day after Thanksgiving and seeing all the decorations for the first time. Mm -hmm. School kids would have that day off. They didn't want to do a lot of shopping, but they'd just go downtown mm -hmm. and, and, and see the, the decorations in the old Marshall Fields and Carson's. That's one of my big memories of the yeah. early part of the holiday season. The problem now, they got start Christmas shopping at uh, Halloween. Oh, so right. all, no, all of it's I'm going of, back a few years. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, when it was well, special. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not really that many. Even uh, I remember I was the first to sign downtown in 1969, and that uh, the day after Thanksgiving, as you said, was the day. You know, oh, it was. Yeah. It was probably over a million visitors. I don't visitors think that carries over much nowadays. Because no, as you said, they're starting yeah. Yeah, Christmas they shopping around. It's the day Labor after day. the 4th yeah. of yeah. July yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, well, also you, have. Yeah, they used to keep the people late uh, coming on Christmas to decorate the store for the next day. And so when you opened <laughs> the day after Thanksgiving, it was a big display. And everything, <clears> you know, <coughs> was special at that time. Now it's. It, they're down there complaining. Yeah. Says, oh, Black Friday isn't as black as it used to be. Right. They're stopping well, on Thursdays geez, now. They, yeah. Start, yeah. they started last, a month ago, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Okay, what were, the, what were the stores then that you saw? What were the, what were the different stores or the, the big decorations? Well, my big memory, of course, is Marshall Fields displays, Carson's to a lesser degree, but I can just about only visualize, because Car uh, Fields has so many windows, you could spend an hour just yeah. going from window to window. Oh, yeah. Other than that, that's about it. And what about uh, the Ferris store, which was later... Montgomery Ward's, uh, yeah. or was it State and Adams? Carson, yeah. Perry, Scott. And yeah. company. Yeah. Weebolts. Yeah. Weebolts. Yeah, yeah Weebolts is all well, The big book. thing was seeing the uh, uh, Marshall Fields. Right. And then if if you, you know, had the time or, or you wanted to stand in line for a while, I remember my mom and dad standing in line and me wanting to, you know, go play with the toys uh, for their, their, uh, Breakfast Club in there. That that was really oh, underneath yeah. the Christmas. Well, I'm tree. so old. One of the oh. stores that was big in my early childhood was the Boston store. Yeah. No, what was that? Now, I think roughly where the fair. Yeah, was, was that later. one? Same one? That was about the first of the big department <coughs> stores to yeah. go in from downtown Chicago well, it, in the it, late it, 40s. I want to say. Yeah. The other the other thing you go to Marshall Fields though they had the Markland trains. They had the. Uh, 
model trains all the time working. So you always had the well, train sets going. Well, that's what I wanted to do is, was, is do that. I, you know, one of the things that, and I don't see that anymore. Uh, of course, I don't have any little kids anymore either. But uh, that was the, the last thing that went up or went down, went around the Christmas tree was my train set. Mm. Oh, yeah. And, and it had all of the bells and whistles, so to, yeah. so to speak. Literally. And that went, they went down after the angel went on top of the tree. The tree. Right. Once the angel went up, then you could do anything on the bottom and that. And you just had a hope that the tinsel, mm. which was real tinsel at real. that time, Tim, yeah. would have not get heavy, on the, yeah. on the yeah. tracks, that on the heavy rails. Lead short circuit. Because yeah. they were, yeah. th that's right, a yeah. short circuit. Does anybody, <coughs> anybody remember when you were talking about trains where, uh, I think it was Goldblatt's, actually had a train that they set up by the ceiling and you could climb in there and it would... Uh, Make a circuit of the uh, hmm. like the. Oh yeah. Oh. Does anybody remember, remember, remember that? that? No, yeah. not that. I know there was a couple of them that uh, had some special effects like that, but I don't remember that one. Yeah, I remember that. I think it was only uh, down there wife, once. And my wife talked about that yeah. the other day. And midnight hmm. mass. That was the. Yeah. yeah. That was the other That's thing. Right. You yeah. know, you never yeah. missed midnight yeah. mass and and. No. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, many times we'd have uh, a meal after that. You know, right. you would eat. Yeah. It, it might be as late as. Like that, that's big, I think, uh, and with Polish families, Italian families, they have yeah. that. I mean, a big, big uh, buffet and uh, yeah. sausage and meat. And yeah, right. All the, all, yeah. All the, you know, and they yeah. sit there till three a.m. or something or two a.m. Yeah. I I know. I went to one at uh, St. Michael's, and uh, the gal there were. It was a small little group, and uh, we used to call our had our own little name there. She lived uh, like on about the twelfth or thirteenth floor up around Armitage and uh, Clark Street, and we went up there for breakfast. And it had been snowing out, and what a beautiful view mm -hmm. out her window, mm -hmm. you know, with all the snow. And uh, do you remember Ralph Feld? Oh, sure. Okay, Ralph uh, would would he had a a list, I guess, of his customers, if you want to oh. call them that. And he would dress as Santa Claus oh. and come to uh, your house with Good, the yeah. kids at night. And, and yeah. uh, uh, Ralph just loved to do that. He and was a very impressive, big, tall oh, guy. Oh, big guy, yeah. 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 yeah, he was on the patrols, and then he did not come on the fire department. No. He stayed. His dad was a captain yeah. on the patrols. Yeah. Last now, much like, 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 much, like, well, much like New York, much like New York, we had the big... Parade and Thanksgiving Day too, wasn't it always here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. at least it was. Uh, Macy's. It was, it was, well, it was. Uh, I don't know. Was it always on Thanksgiving? I get the impression Monday. that's recent. It seems to me I can remember when the Chicago Parade would be like the weekend after Thanksgiving, or maybe the Saturday or well, Sunday. I, yeah, I, was, I don't. Be, as a kid, I was totally unaware there was anything in Chicago. All I remember is Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on television. I don't even remember there being a Chicago Parade on oh, TV. Oh, oh, by the way, for you young folks, Marshall Fields was the big store. Now bought out by Macy's, and I know I'm no businessman, but I sure wouldn't have given up that name Marshall no. Fields here no. for them. Yeah. They, they, still found the clock, right? they found that out very expensively, yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, couldn't it say Marshall Fields, a Macy's store, a company, or a yeah. Marshall, you know, yeah. something? Well, well, you you would think they would. The pro they said they do national advertising now on television. Yeah, it was and I'm not, I, I love Marshall Fields. I'm glad at least it was the city, apparently, that required them to keep the plaques yeah. on yeah, the, the building downtown. Yeah, the plaques are still on the building. Yeah. Still, yeah. And to their credit, uh, the last several years, they have they've paid tribute to the Marshall Fields tradition on their Christmas windows. They've talked about Marshall Fields. They've shown... Uh, 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 the 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 fellow, the Norman Rockwell, Rockwell painting, painting of the guy doing the the clock on mm -hmm. the corner, <laughs> and the uh, the figure, the uh, the the, uh, the the Father Christmas like figure. I, I can't think of his name. I, I never knew it as a kid. Uh, Uncle, what was it? Uncle, Uncle Mistletoe. Uncle, Uncle Mistletoe. Mistletoe. Uncle Mistletoe. Yeah. Uncle Mistletoe. Yeah. They and Aunt Holly. They uh, last year on the the one, of, one, one of the windows. They 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 uh, had Uncle Mistletoe and Aunt Holly. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something funny about that. I went to this uh, Chicago History Museum. Uh, they have a members Is that dinner unique, huh? as such. They had a prime, a pristine <laughs> copy of <laughs> Uncle Mistletoe and Aunt Holly. It was never used. It looked like it was fresh in the box. Oh. And for you, there was also a cast iron 
uh, fire uh, engine there with three horses pulling it. Oh, oh yeah. Ho horse and uh, horse and uh, <coughs> horse drawn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they had both a steamer and a uh, no, hook this and was ladder. Strictly, this is strictly horse. It was a well. I mean, it was horse drawn steam fire engine. No, this was you? this was oh. just a hook and ladder. Oh yeah, it was horse drawn though. Yeah. Yeah. The ladder was not there because it said it was too too fragile. Oh. But they showed the cast iron engine or yeah. the uh, yeah. that's wagon there. They, they Marshall Fields used to sell them. And that's fragile. Fragile. Yeah. Ten right. shot. Ten hot. Our boss is here. What do you want to uh -oh. say, John? Yeah, you're absolutely right, John. In years ago, there was only two parades that were on television at Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. It was the one from May, the one from New York. And then the one from Detroit. Right. Okay. Jail then, Hudson. Yeah, yes, Jail right. Hudson. And then in Chicago was the Saturday right after right. Thanksgiving Day. How right. I know right. is because the 511 Club used mm -hmm. to participate in that parade on, on the Saturday, the day after, a couple of days after Thanksgiving. Then mm -hmm. somebody got a brainstorm to have Chicago's Christmas parade on Thanksgiving also. And I says, no, the 511 Club will not participate in that parade on, on Thursday because I don't want to take members away from their families who should be with their families on Thanksgiving right, Day. Right, right. Yeah. And it's such a tradition to watch the Macy's Parade. I mean, I can remember yeah. that as far back as I can recall. You that's watch right. Macy's Thanksgiving Day that's, Parade that's right. on Thanksgiving well, morning. That's right, because that was no. the, it's like like you said, it, it was a tradition. See, sure. Ever since television, ever since they start televising that stuff, Macy's or uh, well, it wasn't called Macy's at the time. It was called something else, wasn't it? No, Macy's. it was. No, it was, all, not new was it one in New York's Macy's? always been Macy's. Yeah, always yeah, Macy's. The, Macy's. The, the, but uh, the other thing you used to have is Thirty Fourth Street. A the, movie the all miracle time. on 34th yeah. Street. Yeah. 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 And that, that was the one that really But brought. you are absolutely right, John. Yeah. It was always that the Saturday after Thanksgiving was the Chicago right. the, the parade. Which well, made we, sense we, because yeah. then, it, because be honest with you, I, when I get home from church in the morning, I watch Macy's Parade. I don't watch the Chicago Parade. Well, you, know, you, you know. watch now. It's not a parade. It's just a, several acts after another. Yeah. Like singing, that's, dancing. Unfortunately, yeah. It's on the turned, networks. I mean, those. I yeah, the promos. The sponsors it, don't they? No. Uh, they, I think they, so. They do now, yeah. I mm. think. Yeah. It's been going on and off between uh, McDonald's and somebody else. Somebody now. else had it years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think Macy's also threw their two yeah. cents in there for a while. Because the big Chicago parade has always been the St. Patrick's Day parade. All yeah. the politicals right. get yeah. out. That's yeah. the scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the world. They it, calmed that down a little bit around. after a while because, uh, all, you know, yeah. uh, Kennedy going on the south side, raising hell and all that. Well, stuff. That's, that's, now you're talking about the Beverly Parade. That's two different. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's cat different. There. A couple of Christmas, I, I can remember as a kid uh, going downtown. I remember my mom and my aunts taking me to, to Marshall Fields. And I remember the enormous toy department, the oh, Marshall yeah. Field. I mean, as a kid, this was just like Valhalla. This was, was toys, you know, know, piled to the ceiling. It was unbelievable. I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah. Last year, I went to what is now Macy's, and I, I didn't see toys anywhere on the floor directory. And I asked one of the attendants, I said, where is the toy, depar toy department? And in a very surly voice, she said, we don't have a toy department. We don't have toy department anymore. We don't sell toys. She said, oh, there's a few toys in the... And it was like I had really irritated this oh, woman. You're probably the which, 500th which, question. Which surprised <laughs> one. Well, no, and I want to say, because generally all the attendants at Macy's are extremely Street. polite. I've yeah. had extremely good good uh, experience there whenever yeah. I've asked anyone anything. Yeah. So it was rare to get this, this crusty response. But she was really ticked off. We don't have toys. We don't. Maybe, maybe I was the 400th yeah, person yeah. to ask her that question. Even now, this so. year... They do have a toy department. It may not be as big as, as the one I remember as a kid, but they do have a toy well, department have, at Macy's. They, yeah. Yeah. Those adult Ailes, toys don't count. Yeah. 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 No, Ailes, this Ailes was real Schwartz. toys. Does Macy's Ailes. still have the big book department that feels you? I, did, I didn't I see Edmund Gwen there, unfortunately. I, I, Edmund Gwen and Maureen O'Hara weren't right. there. But yeah. Another thing I want to say, when, when I was a kid, we used to go to the, the, the shopping center in, in Oak Park on Lake Street and Harlem Avenue. I remember okay. going to Weebolts and Marshall Fields. Right. And the other stores, everything all decorated. I remember right. that that was a place that I would go yeah. to as a kid. But we also had stores right in Cicero. I remember going, we had a, a little dry goods store. Remember the term dry goods? Right? Yeah. About a block away from mine. And I would do my Christmas shopping there as a kid. And uh, we had a hardware store. It was very prominent in the community. And he would he would sell Christmas items and gifts, even though it was mainly tools and appliances yeah. and things. 
But I, I'm, this little neighborhood of Hawthorne where I lived in, you could do all your Christmas shopping right there. Yeah. Yeah. Without you didn't even well, have to you, go you downtown. To, yeah, yeah, we had the lo- you still had the local merchants. Yes. Yeah. And, it, oh, and that, I have fond that memories was, of that. That was well and good, but I the remember thing was that. is going downtown. Going oh, yeah. downtown uh, was yeah. a thrill. That was a big yeah. experience you going downtown. Thrill. You, you almost never went downtown. No. But I can remember Except that for, yeah, that yeah, toy yeah. department at Marshall Field is unbelievable. Yeah. Going out on Christmas is going out yeah. to buy your tree. Yeah. And going also to, tree to, with your to visit Santa Claus. And he was, what they call it, Hey, Cozy Cloud yeah. Cottage or something yeah. like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With with Uncle Mistletoe and yeah. Aunt Holly as his uh, attendants. And I'd line up the kids and then they'd you know, go there one at a time and he'd hand them, uh, you know, that uh, Christmas candy, you know, a candy cane, you know, and wrapped up and uh, they'd what? say, okay, now we're going to the to the, you know, to to uh, the the the. the, oh. uh, the the, this, the, you know, the, this, the toy store. Well, I can remember seeing those windows at Marshall Fields now and seeing that figure yeah. and not knowing. I didn't know what his name was. I didn't know he was a character. I remember the figure with the little flat hat and the, and the outfit. But I didn't. I didn't know the term Uncle Mistletoe until yeah. until they did the program on Channel no, Eleven. Somebody yeah. Yeah. They did that story yeah. about yeah. Uncle Mistletoe. There's yeah. always Paddington Bear. You could all listen to on the radio. Wasn't there a rival? That Carson's head, whether that was Uncle Mistletoe, uh, they, and then there was I'm sure teaching I Rudolph the Red Nose Ranger was a that was Martin that was that was Montgomery Ward created yeah. Rudolph the Red Nose Robert Gene May. Autry is the one who really got to go with the singing. Of, oh yeah. uh, Well, the story is the story. that that uh, Johnny Marks, who was Robert May's brother-in-law, Robert May worked for for Montgomery Wards, and he was told by the boss that they wanted they wanted a Christmas story that they could use for the kids coming to visit Santa Claus. So Robert May writes this story about the ninth reindeer, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. And it was a big success for a number of years. And finally, in a spirit of generosity in Christmas, uh, Montgomery Wards gave to Robert May all the rights to this character he had created. Now, they were entitled to them because they did it for for the company. They gave him the rights. He turned it into book form sold huge volume of copies of the books and then his brother-in-law Johnny Marks wrote the song what what song was that Rudolph the, <laughs> the Red-Nosed Rudolph. Reindeer yeah. for yeah. those of you who aren't paying attention <laughs> folks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rudolph the Red he shopped it around Hollywood and the story is that every prominent singer in Hollywood turned him down oh. they never oh. tell you but you have to assume this may have included Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra who were the two biggest singers this is 1949 mm-hmm. finally the cowboy star Gene Autry is given a shot at it He thinks it doesn't fit in with his image as a rough, tough cowboy, but his wife looks at it, reads it, and says, this is great, you ought to do this. So he finally, somewhat reluctantly, sang Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I think it it was presented in September by by Christmas. I think it had sold hundreds of thousands of copies. It it is said today to be the second biggest selling song after Bing Crosby's White White Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, well, uh, for years, too, and I don't know if it is now, it was a big deal in in Sears stores. They bring out new pressed copies of it, you know, with with, um, Autry's picture. Sure. The the owner of the California Angels and all that business and radio stations and whatever else he had. Perry Como was going to do it. But his agent wanted Johnny Marks to change a couple of lyrics, a couple of words. And Johnny Marks says, nope, this song is perfect as it is. We're not changing one comma. And so Perry Como, his people, apparently it wasn't Como himself. It was his agent who wanted changes made in the song. The, the radio okay. station up, up in Wisconsin. You know, no. the, the, the radio station up in Wisconsin that plays Christmas music, like we have uh, the one here, the, was it my FM or uh, whatever, but the station up there yesterday when I was up there, uh, they have this top ten Christmas songs, and you're right, John. Number one was Bing Crosby, White Christmas, right. and number two was Rudolph the Red, Red Nose Reindeer. And number three... Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Oh yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that coming there anywhere. <laughs> but you know, you're you, you're talking about uh, things that happened years ago. You, you gentlemen remember when we both used to sponsor the Cinnamon Bear oh, yeah. on WGN Radio? Kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah it's the Cinnamon Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah, played. Yeah. It's still played on uh, yeah, uh, yeah. WDCB. Uh, 
DCV. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. I read yeah. WIND in the yeah. weekend, yeah. too. The weekend show that uh, yeah, they, Hollywood they, they, 24-7, is it? Or Hollywood 360? 360, that's what it's called. Well, our, oh. our station I heard here, chapter of it last weekend. WRHS was playing it this morning when I was coming back from yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. I, I heard it. Uh, yeah, the Cinnamon Bear was always yeah. sponsored by Weebolts. Yeah. Now, my, in my day, which is a little... I'm a little younger. Oh, no, yeah. John's the youngest one here. Yeah. Uh, not you, John. Uh, <laughs> John, the politician, was. Anyway, uh, I got him by a few years. A couple, I think. Isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, uh, you got everybody by a few years. there was yeah. a, uh, no, I don't, TV yeah. Tinnaman Bear. They did a puppets. They did re, the soundtrack of the radio, but they did this with a puppet show. And I remember that as a kid. Oh, I do. And it's yeah. apparently, uh, most of it's lost. They have a few chapters of it. You can buy the one copy from, uh, who was it that took over from Chuck Shaden with the, uh, Old Steve, time radio. Steve Darnell. Steve, Steve yeah, Darnell. you can buy. I guess the one DVD of it or something has a couple of those chapters. You know. Yeah. So. He's, oh, you he's playing set. it right now you can too. Buy the whole set. Oh yeah, I'm talking about though. It'll have the TV, a couple of TV oh, chapters. That, so. Okay. Yeah. Let me. And, uh, the Cinnamon Bear, by the way, the voice was made by. He had been a silent film guy named Bud Duncan. He was teamed up with Lloyd Hamilton. This Bud, Bud Duncan was really, really, really a little guy. He made two Snuffy Smith movies. He looked just like oh him when God. he has hat on and. Uh, if anyone knows what Snuffy looked like, Snuffy Smith, Barney uh, Gould, Snuffy Smith. Just, yeah, I'm just anyway, <laughs> but anyway, he made the voice of the Cinnamon Bear. Oh. And my daughters, uh, my good darling <coughs> daughters, they they got such a kick out of it. Uh, not now grown women, uh, uh, both Notre Dame graduates, and uh, cheer, uh, Michelle cheer uh, uh, Michelle had. I never mentioned this before, but she had a couple of scholarship offers to some law schools, and she wound up <coughs> going on to uh, uh, getting a full ride at um, uh, what's that place, Georgetown. And for in political science, and uh, it was supposed to be it was doctoral, but she only quit with her master's. Anyway, oh. there, Michelle, I got it in. Good for and Jen, her. Jen, of course, did business, and they're both doing very well now. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, they got such a big kick out of the Cinnamon Bear recording because the Cinnamon Bear sounded so much like their Grandma Ryan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Especially when they were it, angry. <laughs> it's Grandma. I know. My, my wife, uh, uh, when she was small, she, she used to listen to I guess they played it every Saturday or something like yeah. that, you know, on the radio. A whole bunch of chapters, right? Yeah. 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 I, I don't I know how many. I heard chapter 19 like yeah. two weeks ago. And I think there's 28 chapters <coughs> like that. They used to play one a, one a week, but now because it's, it, no, it was on during the week. Was on, every uh, night, every day, oh, every day, because it's such minutes. a such a long. Uh, yeah. 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 It was on, I think, a month out. before Christmas, yeah. something like that. And now, because uh, they don't have that, <coughs> at, they play four or five chapters uh, on a Saturday <coughs> afternoon. So oh. you can still Which listen to it, yeah. and you still got. Uh, it's a little bit dated, but it's it's uh, not, not that much. You know, yeah. you listen to it; it's still interesting because. You, you still have the crazy quilt dragon. Yeah, and, all, and it's you know. sort of... Wintergreen yeah. Witch or something like that? Or yeah, yeah, witch. It's, yeah uh, some sort of a witch. Yeah, yeah a lot of witches. Yeah. Lot it's of up witches. in the attic. Yeah. Let me do... I like, attic, hey, so. leave my ex-wife out of this. Oh. 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 Before, we, before we go to break, let me let me do another, another Christmas story, and that is 1942. Oh. Paramount decides to do a movie starring Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire, the greatest singer, the greatest dancer in America, called Holiday Inn. And it's going to be a story about this fellow that, that buys a roadhouse that's only open on holidays. And, of course, the great Irving Berlin is going to write music for each of the holidays that, to be featured in the motion picture. We talk, in fact, talked about it last, last time about the Thanksgiving film, about yeah. the, the, uh, yeah. the cartoon of the, the turkey Moving bouncing it, back yeah. and forth on the calendar. Well, Irving Berlin writes all of these special tunes for the movie Holiday Inn. I think the only existing tune they used was, uh, you know, In Your Easter Bonnet, which he, had, of course, had already written. I think yeah. that was already an existing song. And Irving what was Berlin that from? Is, pardon? What was that from? Probably from one of his earlier shows. Well, Easter, Parade? Done, Easter Parade? <laughs> Easter yeah, Parade. Easster Easter Parade came in 1948. That was a later yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. But Irving Berlin was convinced that the big hit of the movie and the big song to come out of Holiday Inn would be be Careful, It's, it's My, my Heart, heart. Yeah. which is the song that they do for Valentine's Day. You may remember them bursting through the, the, uh, the paper heart, yeah, heart yeah. Uh, Marjorie Reynolds and, and Fred Astaire dancing. And this was, and, and you may have to stretch because I don't know if anybody today remembers the, the, the song, Be Careful, It's My Heart, other than the fact that it's in that film. Irving Berlin thought it was the big hit, all the studio execs. The only person who had a different opinion was Bing Crosby. He thought the big song would be White Christmas, Christmas. Yeah. 
which mm-hmm. he sings at the beginning of the movie and then mm-hmm. again at the end. You may remember him tapping the bells with, yeah. his, with his pipe. And, of course, when the Academy Awards were passed out, it was White Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. It was the best yeah. song Sanga. of 1942, and it remains to this day. They just had a, they just had a, a biography of Bing Crosby, a new one, yeah. in which they said it is still true today that White Christmas is the biggest-selling single recording mm-hmm. in the history of the recording industry. Mm. Well, the other thing that's sort of interesting, songs that almost didn't make it uh, somewhere over the rainbow, Wizard of Oz. They, were they talked about that. cutting that. Yeah. Yeah. They were yeah. going to cut that. Yeah. 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 Louis B. Mayer and MGM didn't like the idea of one of those uh, starlets singing in a barnyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know. What, whatever the reason was. It's supposed to be true. But it was the highlight of the whole movie, really. Yeah. Well, they were trying to cut. The film was, it is a yeah, long was. movie. Well, and, you know, their movie. editors are always looking for things to cut. And, and so that was one of the things they thought about cutting because it takes place in black and white. Remember, mm-hmm. she's singing yeah. that. And they wanted to reduce the black and white section so that they could get to the Technicolor, which they thought mm-hmm. was going to be the big draw of of uh, the Wizard of Oz. They never went back to the black to the color. Then it's when, when they went back to Kansas. They were back in black and white or sepia tone. They go back. To, yeah, they go back to black and white when they're yeah. when they're back in Kansas. Mm-hmm. The, other thing, the interesting thing, of course, we, we know when they remade Ho- they essentially remade Holiday Inn in 1953-54. The name of the movie becomes White. Christmas. Yeah, a lot of changes there. And Fred Astaire was, they wanted Fred Astaire to, to reprise his role, but he was already, I think he was booked to do another movie, and so you had Danny Kaye yeah. in, in, in White Christmas as the dancer. Yeah, Fred Astaire was... So he had Danny Kaye, yeah. right? Absolutely. You just said that, didn't you? I yeah. think I just said that. I think that. I just yawned during that time. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, Sorry. Yeah. As you often do. <laughs> they, they said that uh, Fred Astaire was a precise dancer. He said he can repeat the same dance a half yep. dozen times and end up in the same place every time. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, very precise. But but that was a well, twist. Ginger Rogers was as good a dancer, but she just did it backwards. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in high heels. That, yeah. Yeah. that was her line. That's, that's a great, that's a great she, line. She yeah. did everything he did, but she did it backwards and in high, high heels. heels. Yeah. Bass backwards? Bass backwards. But the fact was that he did a lot of stuff solo, too, you know. So oh, yeah. He did oh, it so yeah. low, you could hardly see him. Dance <laughs> on the ceiling. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are all special effects for pretty. Did anybody else try to record White Christmas? I think I've heard. Oh yeah, oh, oh, other other people. Oh yeah, there's a, never really Frank Sinatra has sang it. Really? Oh yeah, Frank He's Sinatra sang. No yeah, there are other recordings okay. of White Christmas. Louis Armstrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm dreaming of a White <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> uh, that was yeah. Well, he's a different type of all together. <laughs> but uh, he made his money here in Chicago, even though he came from who. Uh, New Orleans. Satchmo? Satchmo. Yeah. The assertion, you know, you associate Nat King Cole with, you know, the, the, the Christmas song, Chestnuts. Oh, written by yeah. who? Mel Torme. Mel Torme. The Velvet Fog. He's a yeah. Chicago guy. He's oh, yeah. a Chicago guy. Well, Hyde Park High School. Yeah. Well, what's always interesting, and though, he, some of the greatest Christmas songs were written by Irving Berlin, who was Jewish. Right. Yeah. You know, it's Mel Torme was Jewish. Mel, Mel, Mel Torme. Torme. Jesus was Jewish. Yeah, yeah. I was, that's right. I, right. What's wrong well, with you? I, I, I realize that. No, I'm just saying that, you know, always the <laughs> dichotomy of people going to separate the two religions. Well, they also. Oops. It's that time. Well, it's that time. we'll be right back after these messages of interest oh. and importance. We'll have a phone call after that. So not only are they all yes, about the. They're also yeah. important. Well, friends, now that the warm weather is here, and now is the time to think about your roof, siding, and gutters on your home or place of business. We could get some heavy rainstorms in the next few months. So be sure the roof, siding, and gutters are in good shape. You don't want mold or mildew in your attic or crawl space or drip 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 on the ceilings in your rooms or have your walls damaged by a leaky gutter or bad siding. So don't have double expense. Sooner or later you're going to have to get them repaired. So call Best Brothers Roofing, Siding and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Mike Besch will drive over in his shiny red truck with ladders on top 
and Best Brothers roofing signs on the doors. Mike will look over your siding, roof, and gutters and give you an estimate and go from there. So once again, don't have double expense. Call Best Brothers Roofing for a free estimate at 630-616-1359. That's Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Call today for a free estimate. The number once again is area code 630 616 one three five nine. You won't be sorry. Back to our discussion. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for not going away. Uh, I didn't go away. We're I'm not, staying. well, we're, we're just about, we're not quite at the home stretch. We're around the far turn. And do we have a, a caller, John? Not yet. Uh, we'll be coming up. We'll not be yet? Up. Well, we've been talking about many things today. Of course, we talk always about uh, uh, current events, recent happenings, a few other things. We may get a little, we may digress here and there, but we, our main topic today is uh, Christmas and Christmas. Um, we have a we had a message from a <clears throat> Mr. R. McDonald from Des Plaines who wants to know how can I get to be part of the program and do some calling in. Well, we do have a phone number available at our website. You could contact them. We could make arrangements, and perhaps anyone out there has any suggestions for a program. What we can do, we're willing to yeah. listen. We're always willing to listen absolutely. to ideas, aren't we, folks? Yeah, absolutely. Are we gang? Are yeah. we? Yeah. Well, oh, well, yes, we are. We are. Especially <laughs> if, they're, if they're, there's no royalties we are. involved or no. something, you know. Uh, Especially if you're like uh, 23 and blonde and... and a female. Know. Yeah. Well, let's, let's yeah. make sure well, you say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, well, you have to be a historian, 23. Of yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. I'm telling you, you have to be a historian, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much history can you have at age 23? Well, uh... <laughs> That's yesterday. Could I, be a lot of history. I don't know, but <laughs> if we ever meet her, we'll That's ask true. her. These, these days, I suppose, things are a little bit... Maybe, maybe, but maybe I'm just an old-fashioned type guy, you know. I think uh, I think the uh, the manager has got something coming up uh -oh. here. Manager, go ahead, Bob is on. Hello, Mr. Challenger, come and sign in, please. <laughs> challenger, I'm the I'm the challenger now, huh? Yeah, well, what, what's my line, you know? Oh yes, mm -hmm. what's that one, up, kids? We have Bob Trejek on the line. Bob is the creator and MC of. Paranormal Radio, which we have here as a program on our Windy City Hometown Network. And hello, Robert. Hi, uh, Jack. How you doing, sir? Oh, long time no see. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> what was it was it? this I morning. Like so. four hours this morning for class. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. we want to, we've been doing Christmas, mm -hmm. and since you couldn't be here in person, can you tell us something about the Christmas tree ship? Sure, I can tell Chicago. you the story of the Christmas tree ship. Yeah, first I just want to say hello to everybody over there at Beach Chicago Historians and, um, Hope everybody's having a wonderful uh, Christmas season, and uh, we'll see you all next year. I guess after this, I won't be coming in contact with you anymore this year because we do the show. You do the show once a month over there too, right? Chicago historians, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <coughs> okay, the Christmas tree ship. Um, since you're talking about Chicago things, this is a Chicago story. It's a nice story. I'll be doing it actually tonight on Paranormal Radio when we take Paranormal Radio tonight, and um, so we'll be doing it twice today. And um, it starts actually like in the 1880s, and it was a very beloved tradition. Um, captain Herman Schooneman came at, uh, uh, captained the Christmas tree ship. The, na the ship's name was the Rose Simmons, or the Rouse Simmons, however you want to pronounce it. It was R-O-U-S-E Simmons. And um, it was actually an old schooner um, dated from about 1878, and the story where takes us up to the year today, what we're we'll talking about is 1912, when they lost the Christmas tree ship. And um, so by 1912, the Rose Simmons was already an old ship. Uh, and what it would do is every year, Mr. Um, Schooneman lived on Clark Street in Chicago, and he would sail the, the ship across with a crew. They'd go to Manitowoc, Michigan, and there they would stay for about a week, cut trees in November, load the, sh uh, the uh, ship up with trees, 
and uh, bring them back and sell them off the Clark Street Bridge, right to the people, directly right off the ship to the people. Uh, and it became like a 30-year tradition, like a very beloved thing that, you know, this was done every year. For many, many years this went on. Well, 1912, where it kind of takes us up to that year now, happened to be kind of a stormy, unusually stormy and wintry um, early autumn on Lake Michigan. So it wasn't too great for sailing vessels like this for an older vessel. And... Um, the captain decided he wanted to take the ship across and, and go for the load of trees and bring them back and, and sell them in that. And um, his nickname was Captain Christmas because he was just very beloved. Um, kids liked him. Uh, people loved him a lot. He was, by all accounts, he was a very charitable man, too. He would give trees to people that couldn't afford them, donate them to churches and to different charities and things, too, as well as make some money for himself and for his crew, too. So it was a, a good thing all the way around. And he decided to do this, even though the weather had been kind of mm, tempestuous and not the best weather, and went across. They loaded the uh, ship up with the trees. They took an unusually heavy cargo of trees, which made it even worse. And then they loaded up and decided to come back across Lake Michigan, over to the Clark Street Bridge, and sell trees, as they always did. Well, as fate would have it, they get into the middle of the lake, and they came into an ice storm and a snowstorm. And uh, the ship gradually became more weighted down um, as the ship was... Um, loaded with the trees. The trees became caked with ice and caked with rain and everything, and it became weighted down. The ship started going down more and more and more. Uh, very windy, very gales. Sails were ripping on the ship, so they were kind of just in like a no-win situation here. They did happen to be seen by a lighthouse on shore, uh, and they could see that the ship was in trouble. They were in distress, and they did try to send a gasoline-powered boat out after them to help, but um, to no avail. That ship uh, found the storm too bad, and they had to turn around themselves and go back to dock. And um, then to make matters even worse, the Rose Simmons lost his lifeboat. So there was no way for them to even try to make an escape off the ship. Uh, he did send a couple of messages out. One was, no hope, all lost, you know, God help us, this kind of thing. He sent off in a bottle. The bottle did later on turn up on shore and was retrieved, so that's how we know it came from the Rose Simmons. And, uh, well, the end of it, the story is the ship went down and the whole crew was lost, uh, Captain Schooneman included. The um, ship went down, and um, over the time... Um, as the ship was down there over the years, um, the moorings and the lashings that were holding the trees down would break loose and would deteriorate over the years, and um, trees would bot to the surface. They'd wash ashore on Wisconsin shoreline and on the Michigan shoreline, so this started fostering some belief in the paranormal, that there's something with the haunted tree, you know, haunted Christmas tree ship. These trees are appearing from out of nowhere, but in actuality, it was a very reasonably explained thing. They were coming from the ship, which has actually been found in the 1970s. It's in 162 feet of uh, water right off the coast of Michigan. They actually found the wreck of the Rose Simmons. And uh, in about 1922, a fishing vessel on Lake Michigan pulled up in one of its nets, um, Captain Schooneman's wallet. Um, sailors in those days put their wallets and watches and valuables in oilskin bags for waterproofing. So when there were storms and, and things like this, when they knew something was coming up like this, their stuff would be safe. And that's what he did. And 10 years later, in 19, now the ship went down in 1922, or 1912 rather, in 1922, they found his wallet. So it was down under the lake for about 10 years under there, and it came up and positively identified that it was Captain Schooneman. Uh, no one was ever found. They never found any of the crew. I think there were 10, 10 or 12, I'm not, if I might be mistaken on this, uh, uh, the crew were never found. No, no bodies were ever retrieved, including that of Captain Schooneman. Uh, the ship that happened to find the wallet of Captain Christmas on the Christmas tree ship was called the Reindeer. So that was kind of coincidental, too. The Reindeer finds the Christmas tree ship's captain's wallet. And uh, over the years, it kind of... Paranormal started fostering up about the Christmas tree ship that it would haunt the lake and things. And then, like I say, too, as these trees would bob up on shore, uh, many people around the Wisconsin and Michigan area do have some of these trees that bobbed up and washed ashore, and they keep them. They still have them to this day. They're really nothing more than just a trunk with some stubs on it, but they do decorate them because they are from the Rose Simmons. And then, too, some of them were actually made into souvenirs, like keychains and things. I think you can still buy them that were some of the trees from the Rose Simmons. Um, and that's about the story of the Rose Simmons. The only other thing with the Rose Simmons that's uh, connected with that, with the paranormal, would be it is said that every December 24th, which would be Christmas Eve, if you look out over the lake and the conditions are just right, you can see kind of a ghostly, you know, four-masted old wooden sailing vessel going across the lake. And many people believe that to be uh, the ghost of the Rose Simmons just trying to make its last dock over mm -hmm. the Clark Street Bridge there to sell its Christmas trees, uh, which it never did finish. How many years did he do this? He, they did this for many years, about 30 years this went on, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, after the uh, tr uh, tr um, ship went down, his his wife, Captain Schooneman's wife, Barbara, and he had two daughters. He had Pearl, Pearl and Hazel, I think were the daughters' names. Uh, they continued the Christmas tree ship tradition. Uh, she actually purchased another ship, Barbara did the wife, 
and uh, purchased another ship, had it done, you know, outfitted it with another crew, and they kept doing it. And then, of course, as you know, time went on, things became more modern. It became more economical to ship the trees in by rail and by truck. But what they would do is they would dock a, a ship on the Clark Street Bridge, bring the trucks with the sh- trees on them, and unload them off the trucks onto the ship. Because so many people still liked the tradition of the Christmas tree ship. You mean the Clark yeah. Street Bridge over the river there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah but well, they did. Come in, they'd somewhere yeah. direct to the people there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where, right next to it, used to be traffic court. Uh, there, yep. there, <laughs> there, there's actually, also actually, the Schoenemans, there were actually two Schoenemans, August and uh, Herman, they're two brothers, mm-hmm. and actually lived right uh, off of Clark Street there, not too far away they lived. That's interesting. There is a, there is a book out called Christmas Tree Book, a uh, <laughs> ship book, but I'm not sure if it's accurate to what you're talking about, but there is a book written about it. Yeah, there's been books about it. Uh, there's a play um, down at the Mercury Theater. I, went, I didn't see it this year, but last year I went down to see it. It's called The Christmas Tree Schooner. And it tells the story of the Christmas tree ship. It doesn't go into the hauntings or anything about it, but it does give you the story of it, you know, the facts and, and what actually happened there. What, was this a schooner, in fact? Yes, it was called the uh, Rose Simmons. Yeah, but I mean, uh, they, you got schooners, you got sloops, you got uh, frigates, you got what else? They they call, well, the, the play is called The Christmas Tree Schooner. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people that tell the story, if you, if you see it in the books or written anywhere or anything, they call it The Christmas Tree Ship. Okay, well, I, I mm-hmm. remember that. All, all schooners are ships, but all ships are schooners. I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, some questions, guys? Anybody? Ken? Yeah, uh, Bob, oh. it, you know, it's uh, Bill? this is Bill Kugelman. Uh, it, it's a wonder that people, a lot of people, just don't realize that Lake Michigan is probably the worst. Uh, uh, it, it's just like being out on the Atlantic Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. Oh, when, yeah, when it you is. You get yeah. a storm up in that. But what did, wasn't there something about... They, they, uh, the divers uh, still go down there, get parts of the Christmas trees. They all turn black. Yeah, and, and um, sell them. Yeah, there's still a bunch of trees down there on the ship. That's why they knew it was the Rose Simmons that they found. Yeah, um, they found it, I believe, in 19 oh, it was 71 or 72. They actually found it. It's down in about 162 feet of water, and they found it and positively identified it to be the wreck of the Rose Simmons. Um, they actually did find some skeletal remains down there too, but they never brought them up. They just buried them into the sand and left it there like a little grave site. Uh, so things do come up from the ship, and from time to time, stuff still does bob up to the surface too. Yeah. So they do um, get that. They brought up other artifacts too. They have a museum of, you know, all the Christmas tree artifacts, the ship's bell and ship's wheel and different things they pulled up off the ship and stuff like that. Where is this? Uh, that's in Michigan, yeah. Okay, in how, Michigan. Do you, how do you spell that uh, captain's name? Schooneman? Schooneman. S, oh gosh, let's see. S-C-H-U-N, maybe two N's, A-M-E-N. Oh, okay. He is buried, well, he's not buried there because his body was never retrieved, but over in Acacia Cemetery, which is not too far from where you guys do well, the show there. Right, right. Uh, the the park there. Yeah, and his uh, headstone is there with the wife, uh, Barbara's name on it. Barbara passed away in 1933, mm-hmm. and uh, his name is on there on the stone also, too, for him dying in 1912. But, of course, he's not there because his body was never retrieved. But people do go to that grave site, and they claim that they can smell... Christmas trees. They can smell pines, like a smell scent of pine. smell, and, yeah. you know, the scent mm-hmm. of uh, pine and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's probably pine trees there too. Mm-hmm. But the <laughs> yeah, there's always a way to explain these things off. Yeah, I think right now though, uh, the uh, Coast Guard seems to be bringing. I don't know if they're bringing uh, pine tr- uh, trees in. Yeah, uh, in in recent years, that's that's why I think this is why the Christmas tree ship story kind of came to light in the last few years. It's you know, it went on for a long Coast time, Guard, right. but no one ever heard of it until a couple of years ago because I think the Coast Guard starts bringing these tr- trees in now, and they say, well, this is actually nothing new. This is something from many, many years ago. Yeah, Good for them. God bless them that they yeah, you know, I don't, I don't are know how taking many, that up. Yeah, I don't know how many they bring in because they, they do have their obligations, too, to uh, mm-hmm. fulfill besides the trees. So oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to say the uh, Schooneman family has been known in Chicago. They had a bowling alley up on Milwaukee Avenue called Shunem and Flynn, yeah. and that was up there up until mm, till the you know the uh, elevated uh, went through. Mm-hmm. Also, was it the same Schunemans? I mean, Schunemans kind of a common you know German. Well, name. Uh, at least it was pronounced that way. I don't know exactly how it was spelled, but uh, the other thing I was going to say is if it was birthed at the Clark Street Bridge, chances are it would be about where the Eastland was. Because that's right. It, it was yeah. on pretty the close. south side of uh, the It'd river. It would be closer to Michigan, wouldn't it, though? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, they were just east of Clark. Chicago River. Yeah. 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 Was it? Oh. Yeah. yeah. That, that we're we're going to do a <laughs> program on the uh, Eastland mm-hmm. after here yeah. coming yeah. up soon. 
Yeah, that's a that's a whole big story. Oh yeah, there's a lot of interesting facts with the Eastland too. Yeah, the, the last uh, that's another one too. Now, up until just recently, very uh, fairly yeah. recently, just a few years ago, the Eastland started coming to light too. Right. And of course, yeah. that's something that happened. You know, what was that? 1915, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Ne- yeah. Next year will be the 100th anniversary yeah. of the Eastland. Right. Yeah, so I'm the, sure that's why we're going to do it. The, yeah, yeah. The, uh, okay, the last, uh, we'll have to do that one. The last Bob, Bob, can you do that with the us? Last survivor the Eastland? Of, of the Eastland <laughs> just passed. Depends what's going on that day. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to come on if I can't. If I can't be there, we can do. By phone. Phone. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, so we're right down the street from Arcadia, so you can't miss the place. <laughs> Bob, why can't Acacia. you be Acacia. with us? Acacia. Are you Acacia. still in jail? Uh, <laughs> is that the reason? <laughs> you no, I've actually been released. Oh, okay. I'm out now. Yeah. yeah. Our, okay. our, our, our I was acquitted. Nice. <laughs> our cross street from Irving Park Cemetery. You to yeah. Did uh, let me see. So the the family carried the tradition on. Then you said uh, yes, and, uh, and actually his wife Barbara. There was Barbara, and then the two daughters. Uh, the daughters' names were Pearl and Hazel uh, Schunemans, and then of course the daughters married. I don't know what their na- married names were, but they actually ran a little gift shop too. Uh, the Christmas tree store. The Christmas tree. <coughs> uh, what they call this thing? The Christmas tree ship store. And they sold, you know, all Christmas-related items. And this was many, many years ago. So a, you know, a Christmas store like this was not like a new idea. They were doing it years ago. They did it. Hmm. Hmm. Where was that Christmas uh, tree gift store located? You know, um, that was uh, I think that was either Wisconsin or Michigan. It's one or the other oh, not, on the not shoreline. Really yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, it wasn't so in Chicago, even though they were from Chicago. They opened it up on that side for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, just the same way as we lost the silver sides to. Yeah, if you go up online, if you look on eBay and stuff like that, and every now and again they'll yeah, say, you know, sell keychains and things mm-hmm. that are supposedly made from the wood from some of the trees, and mm-hmm. some actually claim they're made from wood from the ship. Would you I don't know if they're bringing up any of the wood from the ship except for just like, like you say, the ship's wheel and the ship's bell and different artifacts like that they brought up. Would there maybe be any counterfeit items out there? Oh, who knows? You know, people do this all the time. They counterfeit oh, things like this, yeah. So I'm sure there is, you know, yeah. That really shocks me. Yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you can, uh, if you, if it if it pays off enough, I mean, if it's worth enough money for them to do it, there's a, somebody out there counterfeiting just about anything. Oh, well, we know. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, the other thing now is they also have the... Uh, Laws out there now about recovering any uh, articles from the lake. Uh, I guess they call it archival or uh, hmm. laws that they, they're not allowed to bring up old uh, parts of ships anymore. Yeah, see, now with the lake, I'm not certain what the laws are with lake, like with the lake, with Lake Michigan, which is an inland waterway, you know, surrounded no, by land. Lake, because they're talking about some uh, stuff that they found down there. They they are not allowed to bring them up because the laws have changed because of the uh, archival yeah. uh, thing on that. See, now, with, with the oceans, I know things are a little different. I'm not certain what the law is, like you say, with Lake Michigan. Dad, I'm not 100% on with that. But I know, like, the laws is finding ocean wrecks and things out in the ocean, as in the case of the Titanic. The Titanic was so far out, 300 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, it was kind of anybody's game. International waters, right? Yeah, when, when yeah. Bob Ballard yeah. found that in 1985, he thought, well, putting a plaque on it and dedicating it as a memorial, that would be the end of that. No one would do anything to it. But no, there have been many <laughs> companies that have gone down there and pilfered it and mm-hmm. brought up a lot of the artifacts from the ship. Uh, and also, too, um, oh, for heaven's sakes, I forget what the captain's name was, but the ship was the Nuestra de Atocha, which was a sunken Spanish galleon off the coast of Florida. And mm-hmm. this man, oh, for heaven's name, like me, his name escapes me. But for many, many years, he went back to, like, Seville, Spain and researched old records and knew that these ships were laden down with silver and with gold and stuff coming from the New World. They were heading back to Spain. They came into a hurricane and sunk, and he took them, like, 20 years to find this thing. One of his sons actually died in one of the dives going down to it and that. So he put, you know, a lot went into this for him. And when he actually found the wreck and found all the the wealth and everything down there, uh, the government said, oh, wait a minute, Uh, that's (laughs) inside U.S. territorial waters. Uh, Mm. That belongs to the United States government. Yeah, yeah, what, what year was this Spain, about? Then Spain this was a while back in the 80s, yeah, when he found this. 1980s. And he took it to court and everything, but he actually won on it. He says, yeah, it might be in territorial waters, but until I found it, you never knew it was there, you know. I remember yeah. that story, and, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of money to be made on that, too. Oh, yeah, a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. And what he did, the way he financed the whole uh, thing was um, he had investors, and he didn't pay it. He paid you back in stock in the company, in the diving company. So if you were willing to take the risk and say, well, yeah, eventually he's going to find the wreck of the Nuestra de Atocha, you know, fine. Uh, and it did. It paid off. So these people became, a lot of people became pretty wealthy from, you know, the artifacts and things that he brought up because there were just tons and tons of silver and gold and stuff that came up from the ship. Well, that's what those Spaniards Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. But, uh, but there again, that came in with, the, like, the thing with the international, like you say, with waters like that, I don't know how that works. Um 
the rule of thumb, they were just doing like a gentleman's rule with the Titanic was, yeah, okay, fine, as long as you want to go down there and start pilfering and bringing artifacts up, okay, you can bring things up that are found in the debris field and things that are laying around the ship, but don't pull anything off the ship, which now mm-hmm. that rule kind of went to the wind because they have done that. They pulled things off the ship and brought them up. Uh, but it's you know when it's out that far and in you know no man's land waters type thing, mm-hmm. it, it's anybody's game. Well, yeah. we we have uh, uh, with the uh, fire museum, we uh, we know that there's uh, firemen, our, you know, our divers, our active guys, and uh, the police divers that go out to the uh, uh, through the locks out to the uh, oh, what do they call it, Ken? Going out where? Uh, yeah. Out where the where the water comes. Water crib? <laughs> the crib. Cribs. My crib. crib. They go to the crib. Uh, yeah. It's been so long with cribs with me, I forgot that. Yeah. But anyway, they go out there and they uh, dive for the the uh, the guns that used to be tossed out there. And uh, there's a uh, at one time they changed the badges of the fire department and uh, and of the police, and uh, they dumped them. The Pipe city. Plates. Yeah, the yeah, city with oh. their uh, common yeah. sense, you know, they took How them out there and just uh, yeah. dumped them, <coughs> and of all places, by the crib. So the guys go out there and, you know, practice diving and sure. go down there and get them. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Lake Michigan is you know, a big lake. It's very deep. Absolutely. It's very big. And like you say, you know, like you said earlier, people forget the vastness of it. It's huge. Yeah. B- and Bill and yourself. Middle uh, there, it's almost like, a, you know, ocean like. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, Bill and yourself touched on it, but. The uh, Great Lakes are a huge inland sea. You know, oh, people yeah. say lake, yeah. they think of you know a little fishing hole somewhere and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, when you 10, say lake, that's everybody's impression, but no, quite the opposite. No. Yeah. Uh, all We're very, very lucky to be here, and, and I talk from a fire department uh, stance. Very lucky to be here with Lake Michigan, because fire department thinking. We have all the water in the world no, yeah. that it's comes true. through those hydrants. And, Unlimited. And we don't have to. We're not like. You know, somebody stuck in the middle of the <laughs> desert somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> then how come my bill was so high this time? Because <laughs> you're eighty-eight bucks. Because well, you're yeah. paying for uh, what Al screwed up. Yeah. Years ago. Well, that's because you're, pay, you're, you're, yeah, you're yeah, paying. You're paying for the water. You're paying for the filtration. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you see that's uh, right. available out there. They found a prehistoric forest under Lake Michigan, mm-hmm. which nobody will uh, tell where it's at because of fact too many uh, scavengers out there doing that. But they also found. Uh, Marquette's ship out there off of, uh, I think, uh, Door County, somewhere in that area. Oh, really? My my yeah. niece's hey, husband. Father Marquette? Got, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot oh, really? the name of the ship again. I'm oh, so he, um, his ship actually sunk? Well, that was a, one of the ships sunk out there, yeah. Oh. And then, he died uh, at a young age, too, Father Marquette. Didn't yes. Well, yeah. I didn't know that Father Marquette was, like, stuck here. I thought he... Um, I know he canoed around all over the place and everything. The yeah, he's, he's buried in Michigan. He's Island. buried. Oh, well, they, 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 didn't, they didn't take people back to the native country in those days. No. By the time they got there, his native country was Canada, I believe. From <laughs> Quebec. I don't know. I think My, so. No, he's from Spain, I believe. No, France. Or Fr- uh, Fr- uh, France. France. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. Were, he was French. Uh, early, yeah. early explorers were uh, came in there and he came down here. He wanted to. Yeah. He originated the idea of the I and M Canal, so you know. Well, he, thought, he, he said this would be the ideal spot for it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Him and, and then, Julian. Uh, but Dan- we, we digress. We and digress. Then Daniel Cook uh, fought for it, so they wouldn't be in uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And, and anything else, Robert? You got to add or? No, I'm I'm kind of done there. You guys are doing a fantastic job, like you always do. Ooh. And uh, thank you so much for letting me call. Oh, thank wow. you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. You get the story before I'm because I'm going to be doing the same story tonight on Paranormal. I've got kind of a mixed bag of guests coming on Paranormal. Well, listen, radio you tell tonight, you tell John the, um, you tell John to deliver that, that Bob, and uh, we'll all get a raise. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, Merry Christmas to you all. Merry, yeah, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there anything Bye-bye. anything we haven't touched on for Christmas yet? Anybody? Here? <laughs> you know, my 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 niece's husband has got the the, the up in Door County, and they go over to Washington Island, and he calls it the the Door Diver or some damn thing, and they do all of this. Diving, diving down for over there, and they yeah. found a lot of stuff. Oh, and he takes people out and lets them. Can you imagine what Lake Michigan would be if 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 somehow they could drain it, dry it up, and and they, and, they, and, they and see all the ships? And Supposedly, the, geologically, the it's slowly rising anyway. Uh, is it really? because it was compressed or like seven miles of ice or something one time? You know, oh, oh, mile ice age? of ice, I, I, a mile of ice anyway. 
It'll well, take, it, well, not in our lifetime. So. No, well, you know, uh, you, you remember uh, uh, the uh, surrounding states uh, sued both Chicago and Illinois about uh, too much, taking too much water, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, they found, uh, and, you know, and they sort of prevailed. In, uh, so we do have to keep track of how much water we're taking. But other, yeah. other places are taking water other too, though. Well, no, yeah. That's, that, that everybody's got to do that. Let me, let me, well, let me. But the, the, the fact of the matter is they did, they do, did do a uh, virtual uh, drawing of what the bottom of, of the lake consisted of and everything else. And it, it took several glaciers to dig it out or scoop it, scoop, you scoop, yeah, scoop it, it out. Yeah. Right now we're living on one of the moraines that was caused by the... Uh, uh, glacier, so you know this is the uh, moraine is like a deposit of alluvial soil pushed down there by the sn- the uh, oh ice. Well, Allu- alluvial alluvial that's yeah. the the that, word of the day alluvial. The alluvial alluvial yeah either uh, way and it, not it's like I love you it's alluvial, alluvial. it's it's the uh, yeah, I forgot the name of the uh, moraine but we live in a moraine here and it goes all the way up around you know it's it's lemon moraine yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, what's always fascinating to me is this ad that comes out here that somebody <laughs> wants to go and dig for oil in Lake Michigan. And with the compression that happened over the uh, prehistoric time, there, there's no way in hell they're going to have anything in the bottom of the lake. Well, I tell you what, I had a farm before I got the one now up in Baraboo. It was in Mazomania, and it was right on the R- Wisconsin River, and it had never been... The, the Indians never plowed or anything, you know. They walked We through. could go down there and we could grab a, a, a bunch of goo off of that and squeeze it and get oil out of it. Huh? Is yeah. that right? And we often thought that that's yeah. the way we're, we're going to be way. millionaires one of these days. Oh, two minutes. Let me close with uh, 30 seconds that don't have anything to do with the lake. Uh, right. Christmas Eve, 1818, a little right. town named Oberndorf, about 11 miles from Salzburg, the home of Mozart. The church finds that the organ will not work on Christmas Eve, and so they will be unable to play music at midnight mass. So the priest... Father Joseph Moore writes three stanzas of poetry that afternoon and shows it to his, his organist, a man named Franz Gruber, and asks him to compose music to fit the poetry. They say that it may have been the water from the n- nearby river that rusted the organ. Some say that the little mice, God's humblest creatures, were responsible for it. But that evening, Franz Gruber played the guitar, the only instrument that was able to be used that evening, and he sang bass while Father Joseph Moore sang tenor. And for the first time in German, the people heard the words Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Alle Schlaft, Einsam Wacht, which we know in English, of course, as Silent Holy Night, Holy, Holy Night. night. Mm-hmm. They thought they had merely written something for the one evening, but the following spring, the organ repairman came through, and he obtained the music gave it to some itinerant traveling singers, and it spread throughout Europe. It was played for the King of Prussia in 1834. And the payoff of the story is that Franz Gruber lived for, th- Father Joseph Moore lived for 30 more years. He died in 1848, penniless, without ever knowing the success of the words that he had written. And his parishioners had to take up a collection for his burial. Franz Gruber lived for a few more years. He lived for about seven more years after that and spent the last years of his life protesting that he had written the music and he was widely dismissed because no one thought that this humble organist could have written this this magnificent this magnificent music, which was ascribed to Mozart or to Haydn or even to God himself. Mm -hmm. It was called the Song from Heaven, Mm -hmm. and it crossed the Atlantic, was translated into English, played in 1839 in New York City for the first time Mm -hmm. in the United States of America at the foot of a monument to Alexander Hamilton. And so our most beloved of all Christmas carols was written in these humble circumstances. If you go there today, the church was torn down. The little church in Oberndorf was torn down. There's a chapel now that commemorates it. 
And the, perhaps the most uh, wondrous fact is that the name of the church in which Silent Night was first presented was the Church of St. Nicholas. Aha! Uh-huh. So, um, so I always say, you know, when, when you hear this magnificent Silent Night, think of Father Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber, Gruber. who gave us the song from heaven. Yeah. And on that happy note, Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry from Christmas all, to from everyone. everyone. Well, one moment, one moment. From everyone at Meet the Chicago Historians and from the Windy City Hometown Network. And remember, even at Christmas time, that history is much more than a book you keep on the shelf. Rich? Yes, sir. We wish to thank heaven of Jack FM, WRHS 89.7 FM, for broadcasting our shows over the Ridgewood Radio Network. Recordings of previous Meet the Chicago Historians programs are available for your listening via the Internet at www.windycityhometown.com. And we want to thank the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, John Shikanda. On behalf of everyone associated with our Historians program, we wish you a very Merry Christmas season's greetings and a happy new year to you and yours this is your announcer rich lang so long until next time merry christmas merry christmas merry christmas, merry christmas. Merry christmas. Merry christmas. See you, next you really year. are a historian You have been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, December the 15th, the year 2014. This broadcast was produced by Jack Ryan, directed by John DeVita. Our audio engineer is James Rohde, and the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network is John Chikanda. This program was pre-recorded on Monday, December the 15th, the year 2014. On behalf of the entire staff of the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, I wish each and every one of you a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for listening and take care.